mas mapabilis ang mga gawain na hahanapan ng mga masasamang loob ng paraan para gamitin sa masama. Kamakailan ko lang nabalitaan, halimbawa, na pati ang disappearing message function sa mga chat ginagamit na para magpalitan ng mga nude pics. Disappearing para may teaser, tapos kung magbabayad, makukuha mo na ang file. Friends, we are currently in the process of fine-tuning both the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Bill and the Online Sexual Abuse and Exploitation of Children Bill. The discussions on these bills are making substantial progress, and I'm hoping to be able to sponsor them in plenary before Congress adjourns. The TWG process is underway, and this is the process to really look into the more legal and technical aspects of the measures, including the question on whether or not we will report out two separate bills or one consolidated measure. But in crafting these bills and their technical features, it's important not to lose sight of the big picture. Bakit natin ito ginagawa? Para kanino natin ito ginagawa? I'd like us to really get a sense of the problem and hear from those who have experienced it themselves. Paano ba talaga ito nangyayari? What are the different ways that online sexual abuse and exploitation of children happens? How do the offender and the victim survivor or the one who experiences it make initial contact? What are the roles of the family and the community? What strategies and methods do the perpetrators employ para hindi sila mahuli? What are the difficulties in prosecution? How can we help our law enforcement to go after these offenders? How can we protect those who suffer this experience in the immediate, medium, and long term? And perhaps, also important for purposes of legislation, what are the gaps in our laws that require changes in legislation? Ito po, mga kaibigan, ang mga gabay na tanong natin sa hearing ngayong umaga. Uh, when uh, I, I am aware that Senator Kiko would also like to um, make an opening statement, and I will ask him to do that uh, as soon as he joins us. So, uh, Comsec, uh, paki-introduce na muna yung ating mga resource persons. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge the presence of the, the following uh, resource person. We are from the Department of Justice. So we have State Council Mary Grace Quintana, State Council Carla Nitura Kalugay. From the, also from the Department of Justice, we have Attorney Angerine Medina. From the Anti-Human Trafficking Division of the NBI, we have Attorney Janet M. Francisco. From the Philippine Commission on Women, we have Armando Orsilia, Ms. Clehensha San Juan, Ms. Christine Ann Lee. From uh, the Commission, uh, from the National Privacy Commission, we have Attorney Erlene Lomano. From the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have uh, Ms. Marisel Deloria, Ms. Carol Nuida, and Ms. Gabriela Fernandez. From the Department of Tourism, we have Director Ruena Lu Montesilio. We have Ms. Ruth Elikin and Attorney Jerry Lee Grantosa. From the Department of Education, we have Attorney Hill, Anth uh, Attorney Hill Anthony Aquino. From the Centers for Gender Equality and Women's Human Rights, we have Mr. Aaron Kayabiab. From the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women Asia Pacific, we have uh, Ms. Jean Enriquez. From the uh, Philippine Legislator Committee on Population and Development Foundation, Inc. and Child Rights uh, Network, we have Attorney Zamanta Santos and Ms. Claire Ly uh, Lyson. From, uh, from the Philippine Legislator Committee on Population and Development Foundation, we have Ms. Nimitz Valde. From Plan International Philippines, we have Ms. Shigemi Muramatsu, Ms. Jeremy Kuting. 
From the Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau, we have Ms. Jeline McLaren, together with Ms. Liz Collin. From the Foundation for Media Alternative, we have Ms. Janina Sarmiento. From the Democratic Socialist Women of the Philippines, we have Ms. Elizabeth Angshoko. From, the, from Facebook, we have Mr. Uh, Christopher Kusupili, uh, together with Claire Amador, Amber Hoax, Rob R. Uh, uh, Abrams, and Malina Ilond. From uh, the Pay Maya, we have Attorney Basilio Bizaya Jr. And from GCAS, we have Attorney Maria Seferina Sinson. From Globe, we have Attorney Ariel Tobayan. From uh, PLDT, we have Attorney Eileen Reyo. From uh, the Coalition Concern of Concerned Families of the Philippines, we have Ms. Maria Edith uh, Decibel. From the Citizens Action Against Crime, we have Ms. Teresita Angsi. From the UN Women Philippines, we have Ms. Cherise Jordan. From UNICEF Philippines, we have Attorney Marie Michelle Munoz Quezon. From Stairway Foundation Inc., we have Mr. Isabel De uh, Israel Deloy. From the from Google, we have Attorney Ives Gonzalez. From uh, together with Mr. Daniel Fiel. DOJ. From uh, DOJ, we have Asek Nicolas Felix T. And uh, Prosecutor Yvette T. Coronel. That's all, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. Um, and uh, on behalf of uh, the committee, I'd also like to congratulate uh, the head of NBI Trafficking, Anti-Trafficking Unit, uh, Attorney Janet Francisco, for your citation, ma'am, from the Australian Federal Police for catching the world's worst pedophile. Mabuhay po kayo, ma'am, and uh, you really uh, bring something uh, important to our commemoration of uh, International Women's Month uh, this year. Uh, Senator Aimi, would you like to make an opening statement before we begin with our resource persons? Oh, I would just like to lend full support to all the resolutions and bills filed um, in this effort. And uh, it's most important that uh, this being Women's Month, we finally give credence and voice to uh, all the um, uh, children, women, and uh, beleaguered families in the effort to uh, finally end the title of the Philippines as the uh, um, child pornography hotspot of the world. Uh, this is a disgraceful and unacceptable um, title that we have earned. So we must put an end to it with the help of our ISPs, with our regulatories, and all the uh, concerned communities. Thank you very much to our chairwoman who has taken up the cudgels for all of us. Thanks so much also, Sen Aimi, and uh, for being one of the authors, actually, of the bills we are considering in these hearings and for faithfully participating in these hearings. Salamat po. So now, uh, mga kasama, pakinggan po natin, uh, unang-una sa lahat, no, yung salaysay ng ating mga arguably pinaka-importanteng resource persons uh, in these hearings. Nagpaalam po sila at uh, tumayag ang uh, ating komite na sila ay manatiling anonymous at hindi sila magbubukas ng kanilang camera. Okay, magsisimula tayo kay Ana, pagkatapos susunod si Ria at pagkatapos si Kevin. At uh, bago po sila magsalita, gusto kong i-assure kayo, no? Ana, Ria at Kev, na tinitignan ng komite yung inyong best interest. So kung alinman sa mga tanong, eh, hindi kayo komportable, please feel free, don't hesitate um, to tell us. So gusto lang i-enable ng komite na masabi ninyo, maikwento ninyo yung inyong kwento uh, sa lahat namin mga uh, advocates sa mga dito. So, uh, Ms. Anna, could we hear from you first? Good morning, Senator Sige, Ana, tuloy lang. Um, so, narito pa ako para i-event po sa inyong lahat ang mga experience ako. So, ako 
po si Anna, kasalo po yung labing dalawang taong gulang at mula sa Eastern Visayas. Ako po ay isang super for non sexual abuse and exploitation. At next time, I was at the community of So, ang umaga noong February 2018, ako po ay narescue ng mga alagad ng batas kasama ang NBI, social workers, at iba pang bahagi ng NGOs. Bago po ang kaganapang ito, nagpabago ng di magandang takbo ng aking buhay. Ako at ang aking pamilya ay may pinagdaraan ng pagsubok. Noong 2015, pagkatapos ko ng high school, kami ay nagkaroon ng alita ng aking ama tungkol sa aking desisyong hindi magpatunoy sa pagkukolehiyo. Nagalat siya sa akin, ako na lang daw ang magi- ano na lang daw po ang magiging kinabukasan ko kung hindi ako mag-aaral. Sa tabi ng Nagalit na sobra yung papa ko. Pinadala ako ni papa sa lolo ko doon sa Manila. Nagtrabaho ako doon sa may SM pero hindi ko rin yun natapos kasi nga nagkaroon na naman ako ng barkada doon. Umuwi ako ng madaling araw na, minsan umaga na. So siguro sa galit ng aking lolo, napalo ako at pinasakay ako ng bus pa ng Visayas. Noon, umiyak na lang ako, niyakap ko si papa pagkarating ko ng bahay. Pero di man lang, niya, di man lang po siya umuwi. Opo. So, kaya tinawagan ko ang isa kong kaibigan. Nagtanong ako sa kanya kung pwede ba ako pumakas. Ana, medyo choppy yung audio mo ha. Paki ano, paki ayos lang. Pero ituloy mo please yung pagkwento mo. Hinuhuli namin yung kwento mo. Uh, Naririnig namin ikaw pero minsan choppy. Pero sige lang, ituloy mo muna yung kwento mo. Uh, sige po. So doon, tinuruan niya ako ng trabaho niya, yung humaharap sa kamera, maghubad at magkipag-usap sa mga foreigner kapalit ang pera. Sa loob ng limang buwan, ito ang pinagawa sa amin. Sa ngalan mapagkita ng pera and I'm not proud of it. So, nang ako ay ma-rescue... Paano ka unang kinontact, ka? Ana? Paano ka unang kinontact para gawin itong trabaho? Messenger. Facebook sa messenger. Facebook messenger po. Okay. Opo, opo. magka-kaibigan naman po ng high school. Okay. So mamaya itatanong din namin iyan sa sa Facebook kasi nandito sila no? at kanila yung messenger. Sige Ana, ituloy mo yung kwento mo. Opo, opo, opo. So nang ako ay ma-rescue isang umaga noong February 2018. Ito Nandito po ako pang ipahayag ang isang kwento at 
panawagan ng isang kabataang babae. Sa pamahalaan, sana po ay may pagtibayin at ayusin ng ating mga aksyon, lalo na sa mga kanayunan. Gamitin po natin ang kapangyarihan upang may patupad ang batas at mabigyang mustisya ang mga nabiktima ng illegal na gawain na ito. Our goal is to shut down OSAEC and end human trafficking. Sana may patupad ito sa kada barangay nang sa gayon ay magkaroon ng awareness at karagdagang kalaman ukol dito. May mga lugar pa po na wala pang kalam-alam tungkol sa OSAEC. Tulad sa aming lungsod, marami pa po mga kabataan ang nangailangan ng, at makaalam na krimen ang gawain ito. So tulungan po natin silang makaiwas. Tulu tulungan natin silang mag-report sa mga otoridad. Tumuo tayo ng mga kabataang advocates. Tulad ko na siyang tutulong upang mapalawag ang kaalaman tungkol sa isyo ng USAEC. Sa mga kumpanya naman po, sana maging bahagi rin po tayo tungkol sa kaligtasan ng mga kabataan ngayon. Naway maging bukas ang inyong mga mata sa mga illegal na gawain online na siyang umaabuso sa aming pagkabata. Kung may maroon mang hindi kaya-aya sa online, umaksyon po agad tayo. Kung kinakailangan iba ng account, gawin na. Lalo't sa panahon ngayon, maraming mga kabataan ang naabuso. Dahil sa hindi tamang paggamit ng internet o teknolohiya, tulungan po natin sila. Sa aking mga kapwa, kabataan naman po, victim survivor at naging advocates, sana may gawin din po tayo sa ating mga kanya-kanyang lugar sa pamamagitan ng pagkakontakt ng pagbibigay kaalaman. Ipalaganap po natin ang nakalagay sa batas at ituro din natin kung paano sila mag-report sa mga otoridad kung nasa sitwasyon na sila. Turuan din natin ang iba pang mga kabataan na magkaroon ng karagdagang kaalaman tungkol sa usaik at human trafficking. Mahalagang lalo pa nilang maintindihan kung ano ito at kung ano ang pinagkaiba. Ano pinagkaiba nito? Mahalagang maging aware tayong lahat at malaman natin ang tamang paggamit ng social media. Po. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Ana. Naputo lang yung pandinig ko kanina sa Chapi pero ang ano pala, yung kaibigan uh, ang nag-contact sa messenger, hindi po yan issue sa amin. Pero nung pinapachat ka sa mga foreigner at minsan ay walang, wala pang kasuotan, anong website o anong platform yung pinagamit sa iyo para mag-chat sa kanila at paano din sila nagbabayad sa iyo noon? Um, ano po yun? Pag-website po kami na ginagamit nag-show na po kami yun po yung ginagamit namin na yung chatterbait.com instant subscribe po Anong pangalan, Ana? Anong, anong platform? chatterbait.com Chatterbait.com Okay. Chatter yes, or shutter? Tapos minsan po pag chatter. Chatter, chatter talaga. Parang okay. chat, chatterbait.com Bait pa in. Okay. Minsan? Sa ano, Skype. Or sa Skype. At paano naman sila nagbabayad noon sa iyo? May, sina may tinatawag naman po sila na Token. Okay. Yung kaibigan ko lang po kasi nakaalam nun. So, so true yung kaibigan mo dati na nagbabayad sila? Opo. Magkano yung ibinabayad nila noon sa iyo through yung kaibigan mo? Nakadepende po ma'am sa ano, sa oras ng aming trabaho, sa pagpa-private sa amin ng foreigner. Yun po. Okay. Salamat, Anna. Um... At um, sigurado yung mga colleagues ko ay may follow-up questions din sa iyo kahit mamaya sa hearing. Ngayon, bago natin ipagpatuloy kina Ria at Kev, gusto kong i-acknowledge yung presence din ni Sen Kiko dito sa ating pagdinig. At Sen Kiko, meron kang gusto ibigay na opening statement uh, sa ating hearing. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I apologize for uh, being late. I I came from another hearing uh, on the Committee on Agriculture where we are uh, tackling the high prices of pork and other commodities. Uh, and thank you for this opportunity 
Uh, magandang araw sa kanilang lahat. I have, um, our appreciation goes to the Committee on Women, Children, Family Relations and Gender and the Committee on Science and Technology for putting on schedule this public hearing. With social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter, uh, functioning like an open freeway of information and communication, danger lurks by the second that our vulnerable children could become victims or have become victims of exploitation and abuse on these platforms. Nakakalungkot at nakakagalit isipin ang katotohanan na base sa mga datos na gagamit ang ilang social media sites gaya ng Facebook, Twitter, sa bentahan ng mga larawan at video ng mga bata. Para ka lang daw nag online shopping, maraming pagpipili ang litrato o video ng mga bata. Parang add to cart lang ang gagawin sa matitipuhang mga bata. While data could indicate that the number of pieces of the exploitative content does not equal the number of victims, as the same content potentially slightly altered could be shared repeatedly, one victim of this horrible crime is one too many. According to global enforcement data, the Philippines has become one of the largest known sources of online sexual abuse and exploitation cases. According to a report released in May of 2020 by the Washington-based International Justice Mission, in partnership with the U.S. Department of State and, and the Philippine Interagency Council Against Trafficking, there was a consistent sharp rise in number of IP addresses used in child sexual exploitation from 23,000 in 2014 to 81,000 in 2017. The report also confirmed UNICEF's findings that online sexual exploitation of children was usually a family-based crime, where the abuse was usually perpetrated by biological parents or other relatives of the victim. Recently, the NBI revealed that the proliferation of commercial adoption in the country has also expanded online. Since last month, the NBI was reported to be working with the DSWD um, to track down the persons and groups behind 48 Facebook accounts that claim to facilitate online illegal adoption. In 2019, NBI's International Operation Division has intercepted a group of child trafficking who were trying to sell an infant in a department store. Two of the perpetrators were the parents of the child, while the, other, the others were brokers who set up a social media account to look for buyers and negotiate prices. While we have a number of laws and statutes, the continued proliferation of online exploitation and abuse of our children in social media prompts us to take a look at these laws to see if there are gaps that can be filled in their implementation and to make these laws tougher and more responsive to the needs of the times. As we take a close look at the efforts of our law enforcers, we would also like to find out actions taken by social media platforms, proactive rather than reactive actions, in curbing, if not eradicating, the rampant criminality on their borders. Unless social media giants like Facebook, Twitter, Google act aggressively to permanently address the criminal acts committing, being committed using their platforms online, then pretty much these sites are party to the crime. Using these social media platforms to abuse and harm our children is simply abhorrent and unacceptable. And we have prepared a number of questions to our resource persons, which we will raise later when our turn comes. Thank you, Madam Chairperson, and uh, magandang araw sa kaling Allah. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of DOJ USEC M. Aglipa Villar. Uh, salamat, uh, Yusek, for, uh, for joining us and leading the uh, DOJ contingent in this continuing hearing. Uh, a correction also from no, uh, Yusek M. Um, a correction also from the CHR's resource person, uh, Aaron Kayabiab. Uh, he is from the CHR Policy Advisory Office. So thank you. Uh, bago po tayo magpatuloy sa mga kwento ni Naria at Kev, Ana, matanong lang kita ulit, ano? Uh, sa ang bansa kadalasan galing yung mga uh, abusers mo noon? Ma'am, good morning po. Um, yes, Ana. Kadalasan po sa, ano, sa UK, mga taga US po. Okay, so yung dalawang uh, Western countries na iyon, no? US okay. at saka UK. Ilan kayo na... 
Opo. Ilan kayo na nagtatrabaho ng ganyan noon, na nirecruit ng friend mo, ng kaibigan mo? Nung nandoon ako, dalawa po kami. Kasama po yung kapatid ng um, kaibigan ko. Tapos okay. ako po. So, kapatid nung kaibigan mo, tapos ikaw Opo. na kaibigan Opo. niya. Tapos kanina kasi sabi mo sa amin, uh, yung bayad na ibinibigay sa inyo ay depende sa oras na tinatrabaho mo or kung private ito. So, alimbawa, kung one oras ka nagtatrabaho noon, magkano ang bayad sa iyo? Ano yun, Ana? Sorry, medyo choppy, hindi ko, hindi ko marinig. Ilang taong ka na ba ngayon? At saka ilang taon yung isa pang kasama mo noon, yung kapatid nung kaibigan mo? Ako po ngayon, 22. Tapos nung yung kasama ko ngayon. Yun. Yung panahon yun, 17 po ako. Nung una ko pong trabaho dun sa kanya. At yung kasama mo noon na kapatid nung kaibigan mo, ilang taon lang siya noon? Pagkalam ko po, 7 years old po siya. Kasi seven? nandun na siya sa atin niya. Opo. Nandun na siya sa atin niya eh. Kasi yung atin niya napaparal sa, kapat kay, sa kapatid niya. So ikaw, menor de edad pa noon, tapos yung kapatid nung kaibigan mo ay bata pa talaga. Opo, kaya kailangan mag-show sa Skype kasi hindi pwede mag-show ng bata sa sa Chatterbait. Ah, so, yung ginagawa so... sa Skype po mag-show. Kasi posible pong iban yung Chatterbait account ng kaibigan ko o mag-show doon ng bata. Okay, so sa Skype pa talaga ipinakita yung batang kasama mo dahil doon hindi bawal magpakita ng bata. Opo. Tapos, um, Ana, um, pwede mong sagutin ito or kung hindi ka komportable, kung okay sa iyo, pwede kong itanong sa uh, kung so, may social worker kang kasama. Uh, may pagpipilit ba? May, may pagkulong ba na ginawa sa inyo noon para magtrabaho kayo ng ganoon? Actually, ma'am, din naman po kami as in kinulong kasi mm-hmm. baga... Opo, ganun po yung nangyari kasi nga, ano, parang ang dami nang sinasabi sa akin ng kaibigan ko na maganda ang trabahong to, ganyan. So, ako parang na, ano, parang nagustuhan ko na rin siya na dapat pala hindi. Kasi illegal na pala yung ginagawa namin noon. So, wala pa po ako. Wala pa po dati. Yes, salamat. Yes, and Kiko. Uh, how old was she? Sabi natin, menor de edad. Uh, anong yes, edad? 17 daw, San Kiko, nung panahok iyon. At yung batang kasama niya, 7 years old uh-huh. lamang. Opo. Salamat, salamat, San Kiko. At uh, salamat, Ana. Kung pwede, wag ka, ka muna aalis ako. Kung pwede, samahan mo kami sa hearing na ito. Dahil baka mamaya ay meron pang follow-up questions sa iyo. Or... Mga, po, mga points na babanggitin ng ibang resource persons na gusto mo ring mag-comment. Okay? Pero salamat, Ana. Sige po. So, thank salamat you. Po. Salamat sa iyo. Uh, sa puntong ito, mga kasama, pakinggan naman natin ang kwento ni Ria. Is Ria? Hi, good morning. Good morning, Ria. Please proceed kung pwede mong ishare sa amin ang story mo. Thank you, Sarah Teresa. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Salamat. I'm Ria, <laughs> age 26, and part of the core team of the Court Group Collective. We help victim survivors like myself access counseling and legal assistance through a safe space group chat. In 2011, my ex-boyfriend took photos of me without my consent when I was underage. He shared them with his friends, his brother, his brother's fraternity, his friend's fraternities. When I found out two years later, it was already too late. Those photos of me ended up so far flung around the internet that nearly a decade later, men still tried to harass and blackmail me. It was all the same. 
Look at this picture. I have more. I will release them if you don't send me more. I will release them if you don't text with me right now. That summer, I couldn't distract myself from my pain. I didn't want the hint that anything was wrong, but I was falling apart. I was stick thin, feeling helpless as I was unable to stop the spread of the photos. I dreaded knowing that the upperclassmen in the university I was about to enter would have already seen my body without even meeting me. When I was a freshman, some fraternity members had the gall to ask me about the photos in front of other people. For years, I was harassed and threatened by multiple fake accounts. It was exhausting logging all of the threats. I was revisiting the trauma each time. There were moments I was convinced life was not worth living anymore, that this nightmare would last forever. What kept me going was knowing that none of this was my fault and ending my life would mean letting these perverts win. Only months ago did my experiences lead me to join a team of students reaching out to people like me. We grew our support group completely online over the past 10 months. Lockdown had triggered a surge of online sexual harassment incidents, not just nationally, but worldwide. What we need first and foremost is immediate takedowns of the sensitive media and banning of the accounts that harass us. There must be a faster, more accessible way to stop it before the spread is uncontrollable. Girls come to us almost daily, but many report not being taken seriously by the police unless there's a celebrity or male white foreigner involved. For some, the first result of their name on Google links to a porn site. We do our best to help, but we're lucky to even get an automated response from the sites. Finding a female technical expert is extremely difficult. Our options as a support group seemed limited to hoping more girls would commit to filing legal action, an exhausting ordeal in itself. Lawmakers and law enforcement need lawmakers and law enforcers need to understand these perpetrators better. By using fake accounts, hacking, and phishing, they show clear intent to harm, intimidate, and silence. What we currently have in the Philippines is so different from what other countries already have laws for. Swift online content takedowns, protocols on de-anonymizing perpetrators, and local sex offender registries. This bill, I think, would need to focus on two things, law enforcement and technology. The police and NBI are the first responders for victims of these cases. School administrations and HR departments too. If the people tasked with protecting us don't understand the urgency of our situation, if their first instinct is to conceal the fact that we are reporting or punish us for reporting in the first place, impunity will only grow. While the internet may seem like just the medium for committing these crimes, these crimes exist on a global scale because of the internet. Certain social media platforms are the largest enablers of these child exploitation cases. Case after case brought to them, it seems what matters to tech companies like theirs is safeguarding the data rather than safeguarding basic human and civil rights. Our government has a duty to its citizens to assert their safety and basic human rights above the profit of big tech companies and online platforms. People call what happened to me revenge porn because my ex distributed my photos in retaliation after we broke up. But it isn't always about revenge. Non-consensual distribution of porn is about the disregard for consent and violation of sexual privacy. It's a power trip that takes away ownership of someone else's body. My story and the stories of the girls in our group show that these cases don't just die down. I hope that people's attention spans would turn elsewhere, but the anonymity of these perpetrators allowed them to commodify my body forever, granting access to virtually anyone. We can't call ourselves survivors in the sense that our incidents are behind us. Our harassment has no foreseeable end. Our harassment can make itself known at any given moment, destroying any attempts to forget and move on. So long as society turns a blind eye to what we go through, our harassment will never end. Non-action is an option I was entitled to and chose willingly in order to live my life. 
I chose to ignore the threats to forgo filing cases against my perpetrators, knowing how long and how much it would take out of me. It's not the right choice for everyone, but I chose not to let myself be scraped and hollowed out, waiting in futility for the system to give me justice. But for those who choose to fight for themselves and access justice, they deserve so much better. We deserve better from the men in our lives, from the system, and from society. We deserve better. Thank you. Yes, you deserve better, Ria. Uh, I'm so, so sorry for what you went through. And I wish I could, I wish we could all embrace you, mag group hug sa iyo, mag group hug ke. I mean, you young women are the reason na nagko-commemorate tayo ng Women's Day and Women's Month every year. And thank you, Ria, for holding on to life. At salamat sa inyo ni Ana na nagsasalita kayo dito sa hearing na to para tulungan yung iba pang mga young women and iba pang mga young persons. Uh, yeah, Ria, thank you. Thank you. In those photos that your ex-boyfriend circulated, how young were you then? I was 16. 16? And, and how did those black, how do those black mailers contact you? Anong, anong daana nila? Anong, anong platform nila to do that? Back then, they would make uh, fake accounts on Facebook. So, um... But lately, it's other, they've moved to other platforms like Telegram. So until now, Facebook and Telegram. And um, a lot of other platforms. Like which ones, Ria? What other? Yes, and Kiko would also like to know which other so, platforms. Uh, we've encountered girls uh, affected by platforms like Hoop, uh, mm -hmm. A lot of local porn, porn websites. Mm -hmm. What was the first one you mentioned? Ria Who? W-H-O, was that? W-H-O-O. Uh, sorry, H-O-O-P. Hoop. Hoop, H-O-O-P. Okay. And uh, Twitter and Instagram as well. Plus Twitter and, inst Twitter and Instagram. Wow, they're all over the place. All right. Ria, I hope you'll stay with us for the rest of this hearing. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, please, uh, San Kiko would like to also ask you questions. San Kiko. Yes. Uh, on the aspect of immediate takedowns, Ria, uh, did you yourself or anyone you may know, uh, you know, go through the process of reporting what was the response, if any? Uh, how would you think? How would you rate, or how would you describe the response if, in fact, you or any others that you may know of uh, tried uh, to make this, you know, to bring this to the attention of Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, Instagram? Who? Uh, when I first tried to look at my legal options at the time coordinating with facebook for a takedown release through the doj would have taken six months i'm not sure if it's any faster now we have one girl in our group who had resolved her case around the same time when she was in high school but we still found her name circulating in these malicious chat groups even after her case was supposed to be resolved so we can't confidently say there's a surefire way of completely taking it down. Because even, even my photos are still circulating. Uh, on the, on the uh, point that you raised about coordinating with the NBI and the DOJ and Facebook, uh, this is necessary. Uh, you have to have government in. You cannot go straight to Facebook and raise these issues without, you know... Uh, I mean, of course, if you want to file a case, criminal case, etc. But if you just want immediate takedown, down, do you need to have government involved? Can uh, what was your experience? Facebook would not recognize you, or would not give you, you know, unless there was, you know, a complaint. Is that is that how it works, or how it worked? 
Uh, with regard to law enforcement, our experiences with the police have been varied. Uh, for example, when I tried filing a complaint, it it was literally just in the physical uh, police blotter. Nothing came of it when I called a year later. Um, when, when many of us tried contacting Facebook for reporting on their own, uh, we'd get an automated response or nothing would happen. So it really seemed as though if we wanted to have our data or whatever we we investigated and found out have been validated to be used in court, for example, we would have to file the lawsuit first and then engage uh, law enforcers to help us investigate. Otherwise, it, it seemed as though the the validity of the data would be questioned if we didn't go that way. And even when we found a female technical expert, her capabilities were still limited as to what she could do on her own. Yes, um, I, I raise this because you, you mentioned earlier, social media platforms are the largest enablers of online sexual abuse. Uh, and therefore, uh, they have, you know, they have the responsibility and the obligation to address this. Would you not say that? Even without uh, government coming in, uh, although of course government <laughs> government should have uh, a strong position on this, and in, in, uh, in terms of law enforcement. But I'd like to think, uh, you know, like you said. These social media platforms are more concerned about safeguarding their data rather than safeguarding your rights. Uh, yes, that's, that's really what I believe. And, and I'd like to think if, if Facebook, for example, was serious about your welfare, your concern, that they should have you know, a process by which they can act swiftly. As you said earlier, you need to take down this, this is a must. Is yes. that not right? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a lot. It's been a while since we've needed it. These cramps have been happening ever since smartphones became common. Yes, and and uh, your own experience was ten years ago, and you you said you are now involved with the advocacy of yes. uh, precisely yeah. others who have experienced it. Recently, uh, have you seen a change in this uh, in this attitude and the uh, response uh, of uh, these social media platforms from the time that you experienced it yourself ten years ago? I mean, it's been ten years. I'd like to think that uh, between then and now, uh, they have taken uh, more aggressive steps to address this. In a way, yes. For example, Facebook, I think has. Um made their uh, access to legal assistance more, uh, has made it easier. But the thing is, these perpetrators just move platforms. Yes, yes. And uh, and therefore, that makes it difficult for, unless they have you know the right uh, digital technology application algorithm in place that uh, would easily track them when they, or well, not easily, but would be able to track them. Uh, should they open a new account? Yes. In other, words, in other words, it's in the realm of the possible to, to do that. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ria. Uh, and thank I share you. the concerns earlier raised by by uh, uh, Senator Ontiveros. You know, when I, you know, I think of my own children, you know, and... Uh, Something like this is completely and totally unacceptable, and uh, we will do as best we can in this committee and in the Senate to to address the injustice that you and many others uh, have experienced uh, online. Thank you, thank you for your for your uh, inputs. Thank you. Thank you, San Kiko, and uh, thank you, Ria, for indicating two major fields that we should really follow up. I mean, by we, I mean the committee and uh, as San Kiko said, the Senate, no? you pointed out law enforcement and tech. So we'll really be engaging now in this hearing and afterwards in terms of the recommended actions 
our law enforcement authorities and the different uh, tech uh, platforms. Yes, I see someone raising her hand. Yes, I'll be calling you next, uh, Ms. Angeline. But first, friends, let's hear from uh, Kevin no? uh, as uh, one of our three, as I said earlier, arguably most important resource persons for this hearing. And then I'll come back to you, Ms. Angeline. Okay, Kev, pwede na ba namin marinig yung um, kwento mo? All right, hello. Okay naman yung audio, no? I'm not choppy or anything. Right. No, we can hear you clearly, Kevin. Please okay, proceed. that's good. So I'm, uh, so I'm Kevin, uh, age 23. I'm also part of the core group of our support group collective with Ria. Uh, well, uh, I don't think I need to expound on what you've been doing with the support group. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delve into uh, what uh, I would say birthed the support group. You know? um, platforms mentioned earlier were uh, Group Messenger, Telegram, um, Instagram, Facebook, and the likes. Right? Uh, so on these platforms, uh, this was in early 2020, sometime March or April. Um, well, it's not my story to tell, but one of my associates or you know someone close to me was uh, receiving an influx of friend requests and follows on so many social media platforms. Um, Facebook, she would get 300 friend requests within 30 minute span of time. On Instagram, she had, uh, I, I think at some point, 3,000 follow requests. That kind of um, harassment and stalking. So, of course, um, me as a concerned uh, friend to this uh, person, uh, we delved into uh, looking things up, right? Um, so we, we dived into the rabbit hole, so to speak, and uh, we found this elaborate, elaborate network of, um, well, revenge porn, right? Um, some of these group chats, uh, we've tried infiltrating on our own, you know, tried to take them down. But as you know, dahil wala kaming um, legal help or technical expertise, there's nothing much we can do except report to the platform. And um, in some platforms, just reporting it will take it down. But that doesn't mean it's gone. This, it, it just means it's going to happen elsewhere, correct? It is not going to disappear. It's just going to happen elsewhere. And while we monitor, monitor these chats, more and more victims uh, in my personal circle of acquaintances and friends I keep discovering these. We keep discovering these. It got to a point where there were so many of us in the support group that uh, I personally have let go of monitoring because, of course, dahil nga, lalaki ako, ayoko rin mag-invade the privacy of our, uh, you know, of our victims of our survivors. Now, this is the beginning. Uh, what happened recently, no? late in 2020 by November, uh, uh, the support group was going well. Uh, we've been, you know, doing things to help out our girls. Uh, my current girlfriend, no, um, malapit na ko mag two years. Uh, someone hacked into her account, no, fishing, and you know how on Android phones or on iPhones it automatically saves your photos, your videos into the cloud. Right. So um, her her accounts were hijacked. Uh, someone took took charge of those files, we copied them. And not too long later, a week or two perhaps, maybe even three, we got a threat. Someone messaged her on Facebook. She told her, uh, actually, I can, um, uh, she told her, uh, yeah, she, this is more or less verbatim. She said, um, I'm going to cut everything short. Uh, well, let's get this straight. I'm going to be honest, and I hijacked your accounts, and I took all of your uh, all of your videos and all of your pictures, and I'm going to post them on social media unless you reply to me. Now, now, um, continuing through this message, it says, um, don't get your boyfriend involved. Uh, it'll just get messy, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now. And so this threat happened in November. <sighs> okay. Uh, so, um, for a little bit more context, 
sobrang daming uh, there are so many local porn sites that are exclusively hacked videos all of them are hacked all of them were taken from phishing sites there is an entire website called pinaidb this this is a place where they upload photos and videos and tag the people in those videos right Uh, What's the name again, Kev? Pinoy what? Uh, I'll type it into the chat box. This one's called Pinoy DB. Okay, thank you. And then please continue with your story. Right. In this website, um, they upload photos, stolen photos, stolen videos, and they're tagged. The, the website itself says that you have to tag the full name of this person. Right? So this is an avenue for harassment to every one of the victims there. Uh, moving forward, this was PinIDB. I'm uh, it's giving you this as an example, but the main uh, focus of my discussion right now would be uh, XBRI. Uh, I'll type in here also. That's XBRI mm-hmm. and PinIFLIX, right? Now, these two websites, like I said, are full of porn. And it's not even revenge porn. It's just They, they've been taken un, you know, non-consensually from the parties involved uh, in this situation, me and my girlfriend, right? Huh. Okay, so uh, these, these websites we monitor because some of the victims in support group have been here. Uh, to my uh, surprise, right? Uh, well, my girlfriend has her own approach to dealing with the problem, right? Because we all deal with stress and trauma in a different way. And her way of doing it was to block Uh, this block this person who block who um, who messaged her with the threat. Uh, she put everything on private. Uh, I, on the other hand, you know, uh, I took a different approach. So I've been monitoring these channels, monitoring these websites, and to my horror, not not even too long ago, I think it was just a month ago, uh, I found one of our videos on the website. Uh, <laughs> Right, so, uh, well, we, we had it taken down. Uh, the, these websites masquerade as if they're, you know, international, as if it's professional, as if everything's consensual because they have a, a quote-unquote policy in effect that uh, everything, that um, then there's nothing non-consensual, there is no bestiality, et cetera, et cetera. You know? um, uh, I would I guess that's the standard policy for porn sites, but they don't really follow it because obviously... All of the contents of this website were taken non-consensually. Now, two weeks later, I find a video of ours on Xbury. It's a different video. It's another one of our videos. We tried to get this one taken down. It hasn't been taken down yet. And then, you know, two more weeks, uh, it's another video. A third video of a different, you know, it's, it's a different video. It's a different material. So, and... Um, uh, So my, my, my girlfriend has been receiving so much harassment. I, I myself have uh, been receiving harassment as well. Uh, she's, she's been getting messages on, you know, on Facebook, you know, nice scandal. Uh, some people take screenshots and send her these screenshots. You know, it's, um, for lack of a better word, it's uh, sick. It's sick. You know, they, they, they find uh, joy in uh, taking control and, uh, you know, showing that, oh, you, you didn't consent to this, but I have it, right? And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm receiving harassment too. But, of course, you know, we live in a patriarchal society, and it's so much worse for her. Right? It's gotten so bad. All the harassment has been so bad that uh, when my girlfriend started work, say, a week ago, I have been so... So worried that she would be receiving this kind of workplace harassment. Like I, I couldn't sleep. I would literally every night check these websites, check these group chats. Oh gosh! And this group chat, the group chats, Facebook, Telegram, who? Well, Facebook. We don't have any more uh, monitored chats in Facebook. But who? And Telegram. I've been seeing our videos, different videos again from the ones I've posted in those websites. Um. These group chats are free, and these are the ones that we have access to. But there are more group chats. They have what we call premium group chats. They pay to get in. And I have no doubt that on some 
premium group chat somewhere. All of our files, all of our photos, all of our videos that were stored in the cloud automatically to our phones. They're available for consumption. They're commodified. They're making money off of videos and materials that they have they they have they, they took without consent from me or from a girlfriend. I'm not gonna mention your name, of course. But uh, you know, we live in this fear. Uh, since uh, we do Mm, I would say work in an industry that is related to uh, publicity. No. We, we, we have to advertise ourselves as people. This industry that is personality-based, at any time, we're afraid that we're going to be dropped from all of, our, uh, all of our roles. Everything. Because someone somewhere will sensationalize those videos. I, I'm not. I'm. I, I honestly would count my, count us lucky because it's not even one of those things that went viral on Facebook. It hasn't gone viral, and that's lucky for us. But just imagine how much worse it is for the girls, for the other victims that were uh, that have have gone viral. It's. Uh, it's so bad because some of these women, some of the victims we have, have had children already. It's, it's five years behind them, six years behind them. Up until now, they can't go to work because so they, they went to work, they tried to apply, and then, you know, even before they get the job offered, they, they get harassed already. These women range from children. Uh, I think the youngest in our group is 13 years old to full-grown women of uh, 30 or so who already have children. So you can see it's, it, it doesn't matter what, what age, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's, it's, it's happening. You, you, you're never going to outgrow it, no matter how long, how long it takes, no matter how long, you know, how much time has passed. It, it, it doesn't go away. And that's my fear for me and my girlfriend. For us, this is very, very fresh. It's been a month. But I've been working with these cases for oh, more than a year now. And uh, I, I, I felt the pain secondhand at first. And now this happens. It, it just... Uh, uh, you know, it, it uh, builds my drive even more to find justice because these chats is everything. We even we were able to identify some people uh, somehow, but you know, we don't we don't have enough information to take it forward. Because when when we did try to take it forward to to pursue legal action, to you know, to get to get uh, the police involved or the NBI involved, it's it's victim blaming here. It's uh, oh yeah, put a, put in a blotter. Three months later, nothing happens. You bring in a lawyer. You pay thousands and thousands of pesos. You drain all your resources, and still, the NBI will not do anything about it. Nothing. Um, a close friend of mine is a victim. Uh, we are so close that when I saw her added into the group chat of the victims. You know, it took my breath away. This was early into the operation. I saw her, and I had no idea this was happening to her. You know, the cross she had to carry every day. Every day. Because on so many websites and so many group chats, her materials are being spread, they're being sold everywhere. She gets harassed in school by classmates, even. And... You know, it's there's it's it's a long, long battle. I I know this is there's, there's, there has to be so much change that has to be put into place, systemic change, even law enforcement. You know, we need to you know some training, some technological, uh, you know, technical training for whoever is in charge, and then you know the, the infrastructure and everything deals with telecommunications, with internet providers, and everything, but. 
that's what we, me and Ria, and the rest of our core group are fighting for. Every day, now me as a victim myself, I would lay down to sleep and end up sleeping at 5 a.m. because I scroll through all these, every platform that I know of, the chats, the websites, the Google Drives, the Mega Drives, and everything. And you know, since it's so fresh, honestly, I, I can't put it to words how, how it feels. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I may have missed a detail or two. I may have, you know, uh, gone on for a bit too long, but I'm open to questions. If you'd like to, uh, you know, any useful information that you can glean from uh, from what me or Rian knows, from everything. Um, we're, we're open to answer everything. We're, we're open to cooperate with it because we, we've, honestly, I, I personally have made it my life's mission to get these people behind bars. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Just to wrap, up, wrap it up. Thank you for listening to our stories. Thank you very much, uh, Kev, for sharing your story, you and your girlfriend's story. You know, despite the pain, we could all hear you trying to exhale the pain while you were uh, telling us the story. And uh, yes, uh, I hope that you will continue to work with the committee as we also in turn try to work with our law enforcement authorities and the tech uh, community in, in putting a stop to this. Now, all the way from how can smartphones be made unhackable, you know, personal photos and videos into the cloud and all the way to cracking down on those uh, on those different um, porn sites. So also, Kev, please stay around for the rest of our hearing because I'm certain my colleagues will, will have uh, some questions for you as well. But at this point, mga kasama, pagkatapos nating marinig sina Ana at uh, Ria uh, at si Kev, uh, gusto kong unang-unang uh, tanungin yung mga carers ng ating mga uh, young persons, no, uh, Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau at Saka Plan International. Uh, but before I ask them, no, uh, kasi ang dami nating mga batas, no, so asan nagkukulang pa yung ating mga batas? Before I post, uh, ask them that question and also ask DOJ and our other civil society orgs to address it, um, pwede ko bang hilingin sa COMSEC, uh, kilalanin lang ulit yung ating mga new arrivals? Yes, uh... We have an additional resource person. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge uh, Mr. James Benedict Gutierrez of DOJ. From the Philippine Commission on Women, we have Ms. Zaira Cuevas. From uh, the National Telecommunication Commission, we have Engineer Imelda Walson. From DSWD, we have Mr. Christian Bio. From uh, the Department of Tourism, we have Attorney Bebeca Lopez. From the uh, Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration, we have Director Jocelyn Hapal. From uh, the Center for Gender Equality and Women's Human Rights, we have Ms. Patricia C. Then from the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women Asia Pacific, we have Attorney Christina Sevilla. From International Justice Mission Philippines, we have Attorney Lawrence Adita and Attorney Noel Ibalier. From the... Uh, from Facebook, we have the Associate General Counsel, James Kisumbing. From TikTok Philippines, we have Mr. Christopher Rada. From Smart Communication, we have Attorney Roy Ibai. From uh, ANCAS, we have Ms. Angeline Tom. From Children's Legal Bureau, we have Attorney Noemi Abarientos. And from Blast F. Ople Policy Center and Training Institute, we have Ms. Susanna Toots Ople. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Salamat, Comsec. So, pwede bang marinig mula sa Women's Legal and Human Rights Bureau at saka sa Plan International din? So, saan pa nagkukulang yung mga batas natin? No? We have the cybercrime law. We have the anti-child pornography law. We have the anti-voyeurism law. So, ano pa yung kulang? Saan pa yung gaps? given these stories shared with us by these young people. Sinong gusto mo unang sumagot? Yes, 
Miss Jelen, please. Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Senator Risa, and uh, magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Um, happy International Women's Day po. Um, we've met um, Kev and uh, Ria last year, no? During mm -hmm. actually yung nagsimula when the pan I mean I think at the middle no, but after the lockdowns around I think. July or August, they were actually looking for a legal organization and they approached the art, the network, the alternative law groups to look into their case. No, uh, I think the uh, the challenge is the anonymity no, that we we actually raised no in the last Senate hearing. Um, anonymity or uh, of the perpetrators and the in inability to identify who is at the end. <laughs> of that IP address. So, um, and as mentioned by uh, Ria, although the situation or the incident happened when she was still in high school, the photos are circulated even until now. No? Um, so I think that's the common problem. And similar to what happened to Kev, we were able to take down one of the video by writing, uh, by writing Pinay.flix a letter and telling them that if they don't take it down, we will file a case against them. But there was no official response. So they took it down, uh, but there was no response. No, um, uh, As of, I think, two weeks ago. I'm not sure if there was an official response, Kev, no? but as far as I know, there was no uh, response from Pinay.flix. So it was very easy for them. And we even, uh, I even asked the group, no? Uh, uh, our, 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 the members of the alternative law groups to write again a letter to Pinay Netflix because uh, we will not allow them to just take it down and no official response or uh, not making them accountable. No? Uh, but then again, the challenge, um, Senator, is that um, as mentioned by Kev, is um, there are just ordinary citizens. They are not celebrities. They are not, not known influencers. And it will really take a lot of efforts and money to really um, continue and file with the case, no? Uh, there were also efforts, actually, na pumunta naman po sila sa PNP because actually that was our first question. Did you approach the PNP Cybercrime Lab or the NBI? But most of them, uh, sadly, responded to us negatively that they have a very bad experience. That um, I, uh, I I remember when they were telling us their story, someone even said, Ah, si Juan de la Cruz, dati na yan eh, ganyan rin pero hindi namin mahuli. So parang referring to a particular per 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 perpetrator uh, who have committed several uh, harassment online, but until now, um, there was no actual uh, filing of the case. No, So I think the these, uh, these uh, advocates... Um, or collective are actually trying to help not survive by themselves. Um, so what we did was to at least address the psychological needs of the group, but they really wanted uh, no, uh, to file a case. And that's the reason why we thought that being part of the Senate hearing might help, um, number one, to help in the investigation for those who are willing to file a case. Because as far as I know, uh, as mentioned by Ria and Kev, there are actual, there are other victims also. There are other victims who are ready to file a case, but they want, in a way, an assurance that uh, their case will be handled handled sensitively and uh, no victim blaming. Because most of them actually, um, um, ha, um, let's say, whether not everybody knows, some of them actually agreed to have that photo with their intimate partners. They trusted that their intimate partner will take care of that photo and would not uh, uh, share it with the others, uh, thinking that there's love and trust. At the end of the day, um, that love and trust uh, did not prevail. No? So, so uh, ang mang nangyayari, ang response ay, ba't mo kasi ginawa? Um, ba't ka kasi pumayag? So I think those kind of comments are what we wanted really to avoid. And that's why when we ask them, okay, we will call this person, uh, we have to assure them. We always have to assure them that we have 
uh, properly talk to the some private investigator. So we have actually uh, talking to a private investigator who is in a way uh, familiar with the technological um, uh, developments in ICT. Kaya lang marami pa rin kasi nga when they tried to collect the evidence or when they tried to help the other victim survivors, there are other aspects kasi, Senator, eh, how the evidence was uh, saved. Uh, sinave ba siya? Inopen ba siya ng marami? So, ini-explain nung, nung technolog- anong tech expert. And I think yun yung medyo hindi rin alam. Not, not everybody knows how to save um, digital evidence properly. So, for example, if I save your photo now, uh, uh, um, it should be saved in a proper, uh, for example, as PDF. And it should not be open to ensure that it will not be modified. The, our tendency is to open it and open it and open it. So it will eventually jeopardize the preservation of evidence. And not everyone knows how to preserve an evidence, especially for young people like um, uh, um, Kev and uh, Ria. No? And siguro, yung iba pa po. So I think yun yung mga challenges na madalas because um, sometimes the evidence are not enough to really file a case. And maybe some of our text experts here can actually explain what is the problem when it comes to preservation of evidence because those, I think, are the nitty-gritty of filing a case where digital um, digital evidence are involved. Po. So, ibang-iba siya na hindi sapat yung testimony ng no. biktima. There are other in, uh, um, other uh, things that has to be considered when filing a case related to anti-photo and video voyeurism. And I remember in one of the discussion, the tendency of most of the victims is to take down the pictures, the video. So pag na-take down na, as mentioned last time, there are there are no available evidence anymore. But I think that's the challenge. For Tama kayo, Ms. Jelen. Sinabi din yan ni Attorney Angie Rin ng NPI last time. The, at least two general sets of evidence at yung mga paraan para obligahin uh, yung particular platform na yan to preserve no for purposes of investigation so, and prosecution. So yung problem, um, what, which will go first? The takedown for your for your own sanity or to preserve the evidence? Uh, and then if you properly preserve the evidence, I hope it will not happen in this country, but in other countries they would say, or because oh, they, she preserved this evidence because uh, sextortionist extortionist siya or uh, she's trying to extort. So in some other countries, those kind of uh, justification has been used. No, I remember one particular case in Thailand, ganun yung ginawang justification ng perpetrator against. So I think that's the, ano, the nitty-gritty one. So yun lang po, ma'am. Thank you. Salamat, Ms. Jelen. And precisely, it's those kinds of victim blaming na gusto din nating baguhin. Una, dahil mali in principle, pangalawa, hindi talaga nakakatulong to uh, stop uh, the crimes and then to bring justice to the to the victim survivors or to those who who, who suffer these crimes bago ko tanungin iyan din no sa plan international uh, a quick question no regarding dun sa sinabi ni Ms. Jelen sa anonymity of the perpetrators ito tanong ko sa DOJ cyber crime pati sa NTC ano ba yung mga barriers kaya hindi natin mabasag-basag itong anonymity ng mga perpetrators Would DOJ Cybercrime like to take the question first? Would it be State Councilor Quintana? Or or Attorney Angerine, please. So glad that you're with us again in, in the continuation of this hearing. Good morning. Please, yes. Ma'am, this is for Yes, ma'am. Yes, Attorney, please proceed. Attorney Angeline, uh, medyo mahina yung connection nyo. But I'd really like to hear from you on this point. Cross- Attorney Angeline, are you able um, to fix your audio? Better? Yes. Um, okay, that's better. Please proceed. Hello? Yes, Attorney Angeline, we can hear you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, please. Go on. 
the anonymity ma'am of the perpetrator is one of the biggest challenges not only in OSAEC cases but in all cybercrime cases. But specifically when we are um, dealing with a case na that uh, social in a social media platform, for example, there is a perpetration of the crime that ginamitan ng social media account. Kadalas, most often than not, if a cyber criminal wouldn't really use his true name, so he he would just input, um, he would just input hindi totoong subscriber information. So, for example, if the if the law enforcement, PNP and NBI, even if they would get the name of that, um, of that, the account, the subscriber, if kahit na makuha niya yung subscriber information from the social media platform, it, it wouldn't really lead to a um, good evidence that would directly lead them who is the perpetrator of the crime. So um, what they would do, ma'am, in that sense, it, it, after getting the subscriber information and traffic data, ang isa pa kasi nilang makukuha from, from service providers like Facebook would be IP address. So as mentioned earlier by one of our resource speaker, if yung, yung IP address na nakuha natin sa isang social media platform, we would lalapit tayo sa internet service providers, like for example, Globe and Smart, and ask them who used this IP address at, during this time. And currently, ma'am, medyo nahihirapan tayo in getting that information from internet service providers because of technological limitations that I I hope they could um, discuss later on so we can help them also hurdle that technical limitation. But basically, that's the that's the um, summary kung bakit tayo nahihirapan. Kasi the perpetrator wouldn't really give her her true name or true identity when ever creating a social media account and gagamitin niya. And the, our only lead would be IP address. Lalapit tayo sa internet service providers and there is technical limitation on their part in order to provide us to to give us leads as to that as to that. Yes. So in 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 case building, ma'am, medyo mahihirapan na because the first thing that you would you would really see in 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 filing a case would be sino ba yung kinakasuhan mo? Who is who is the perpetrator? How would you attribute the crime to someone na hindi mo na ma ma identify? So yun po, ma'am. Thank you. Salamat, Attorney Angerin. Uh, mukhang kung mag, nagiging klaro, no? ang kailangan nating gawin, address on the tech side, the tech limitations na sinasabi nyo makes it difficult or make it difficult for investigation and prosecution. So that dito naman po sa side ninyo ng law enforcement, you will be enabled to do that case build up, including gathering the necessary evidence to bring justice to the victim survivors or those who suffer those crimes and put a stop to the criminal activities of those criminals, make them accountable. Uh, pagdako ko sa NTC, ibahin ko ng konti yung, yung tanong, no? Uh, referring also to what were related to us by by Ria and um, Kev, pati ni Ana. It, it seems, no, to address sa NTC, it seems that victim survivors have to make a terrible choice Nabanggit na rin natin ito nung unang hearing. A terrible choice between calling for takedown and thereby having uh, immediate peace of mind but risking losing the evidence no? or preserving that evidence for pro uh, investigation and prosecution purposes. Pero andyan pa rin yung material. Umiikot pa rin sa, sa universe na yan. So for NTC, wala bang paraan or ano ang paraan? Ano ang mga paraan both to take down and yet preserve evidence. So serving the interests of the victim survivors and our law enforcement authorities. Could we hear please from NTC? Good morning po ma'am. Good morning po sa lahat. Good morning. Ah, yes, Engineer Walsh, and good to have you here uh, ma'am. Uh, yes ma'am. Ma'am, in our submission to, uh, to the chair, uh, we have indicated uh, under the duties and responsibilities of the private sector, wherein uh, once uh, a request for blocking or removal of website is done, 
immediately at the same time and simultaneously uh, the provider has to uh, preserve the evidence. Now, uh, ma'am, uh, at this stage, we would like to submit to the committee that we have uh, uh, the International Telecommunications Union, particularly mm -hmm. the Development Bureau, who issued uh, who issued guidelines. I just uh, who issued guidelines, ma'am, for mm -hmm. industry on child online protection. This is uh, issued twenty twenty. Likewise, we have guidelines for policymakers on child online protection. If uh, the committee may consider to, 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 to read the contents of these guidelines so that yeah. when we finally uh, craft uh, the duties and responsibilities of uh, what we call internet intermediaries, which uh, mm -hmm. we have also submitted uh, the definitions and terms that we propose to be included in the in the bill, uh, yes. maybe the committee may consider uh, furthering uh, the duties and responsibilities we have initially included in our submission. Ma'am, uh, these two guidelines, these okay. guidelines issued by uh, the ITU, is uh, crafted by experts uh, internationally. So, um, with that, ma'am, yung yung tanong yung kanina, what could be the challenge? First is we don't have registration in the Philippines. Uh, Ninety-five yes. percent of mobile phones, which is uh, used also for mobile broadband, we don't have registration. Second, mm -hmm. we don't have registration for most of the social uh, media intermediaries. Mm -hmm. Only we have registration only for value-added service providers. Nandoon po yung internet service provider who provides access to the internet, but not necessarily to to the not necessarily that they be able to see the contents, but the contents would be posted by either one the user of the service or two uh, the content provider itself. So maraming pong challenges, ma'am, but I hope. Um, with the with the information given by NTC for uh, the honorable committee to read the two guidelines i hope uh, we would have a better uh, better listing of uh, what would, what should be the duties and responsibilities of all the internet intermediaries not only the isp or the content host but, but all others both. salamat engineer email that this committee will certainly um, positively consider the inclusion of those guidelines. I think what we really need to do moving forward is eh, identify at subukan sa abot ng ating makakaya to close those gaps, both on the tech side, as you are describing, and on the law enforcement side, para pag mag magawa nating mas mahigpit yan, both can mutually uh, support each other in order to put a stop to these crimes and better protect those who experience them or who become uh, victim survivors. And uh, speaking of uh, experts, um, I see uh, Mr. Ace Deloy of Stairway Foundation uh, raising his hand. He's uh, considered an expert on OSAEC by the Child Rights Network. So I'll recognize you now. Uh, Mr. Deloy, uh, please keep your response focused uh, on the questions uh, at hand. Uh, good, morning, yes, good, yes, morning. good morning, Senator. Yes, good morning for Senators. Yes. So just, uh, you know, just to share on the challenges. So we, Stairway Foundation, we started working on this issue around 14 years ago in the mm -hmm. Philippines. And we actually saw the same pattern, particularly the cross-platform sharing. Like more, mm -hmm. more than a decade ago, it was offline content development and then moving towards website and then moving towards pirated DVDs across Quiapo mm -hmm. and then being re-uploaded again in online platforms. And this was, what, 14, 13 years ago. Unfortunately, more than a decade working on this issue, we're still talking about it until eventually it evolved into sexual exploitation uh, with the commercial nature and also like what uh, Anna, Ria, and Kevin shared bravely a while ago. So our work mostly focuses on prevention, trying to empower potential victims by building up their protective behavior. So we work primarily mm -hmm. with the Department of Education and the SWD. However, as a child protection organization, we realize that 
uh, prevention is just really one part of the whole equation. And really, if, if we want to address long-lasting impact, we must look at this whole problem from a demand point of view. We must look at the demand portion. Because as long as there are offenders, there will be victims. Because at the end of the day, it's not, it's not the victim's fault. Eh? It's the right. offender's fault, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. of course, there are certain technology limitations in going after offenders, like what was mentioned a while ago. Uh, you get an uh, IP address in the Philippines, but we're all basically IPv4, which means mm -hmm. one IP address might potentially be shared by thousands of subscribers, as mm -hmm. opposed to IPv6, for example, yes. where you can pinpoint specific subscribers. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are technology limitations like that, which I, I guess the NTC, the ICT can help fast track in addressing in order to. So you mean, the, sir, Ace, shifting to IPv6 would help break the anonymity of perpetrators? I, I'm not a very technical person, but based on okay. what we, we saw from research, it will help at least okay. because that okay. will limit like the the pool of IPv addresses that can well, mas madaling matrack basically, right? Uh, so I'm not privy to the shift towards to IPv6 in the Philippines. Uh, however, also on the legislative side, uh, there are certain provisions of existing laws which is which is not maximized actually. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, case in point, uh, the anti-child pornography law which was passed in 2009. There are certain provisions there which are very progressive. For example, there's a section there which uh, prohibits or criminalizes luring and grooming of children. Mm -hmm. So from an offender, from a child protection perspective, no. so you have the actual sexual offense. Like, for example, uh, the uh, having children undressed and sexually abused and recorded via the webcam or cell phones. But yes. from a child protection point of view, you also have preparatory acts. Yes. This is the grooming. This, these are the initial behaviors of offenders toward victims in order to manipulate children towards committing such behaviors for sexual abuse. Now, in RA 9775, grooming and luring is defined. And that, those, are the, those are the preparatory acts. It is criminalized under 9775. So, for example, in 9775, uh, grooming is defined as the act of preparing a child or someone who, uh, someone who the the offender believes to be a child for purposes of sexual activity later on, like production of child sexual abuse material, etc. However, in our experience working on this issue for more than a decade, we haven't had any one conviction yet or a case yet of grooming filed. Okay. It's always waiting for the actual sexual abuse to happen, when in fact, that very provision of the law could be a proactive one, because you yes. can actually entrap potential offenders before they get to actually commit the offense. Mm -hmm. So, Sorry. aside from Sorry, the, just, I need yeah. to cut uh, your presentation uh, yeah. at this point, because I, I need to move to uh, our other private sector resource persons at, as well. But Please uh, is submit nyo yung inyong position paper sa committee. And I hope, Sir Ace, are you still there? I hope that you can also participate in the technical working group precisely to address also this matter of uh, existing progressive provisions in the laws we are seeking to amend uh, para maging digital era uh, appropriate no? and how, how we can bring them uh, up to speed. Sir Ace, can you do that for the committee? Yes, po. thank you, Senator. Okay. Salamat po. Salamat sa inyo, uh, Mr. Diloy. So, uh, at this point, friends, I'd like us to hear from our private sector uh, resource persons. Uh, for example, uh, Facebook no, asked for permission to make a presentation. I will ask them to do that in a moment. I also believe uh, uh, Senator Kiko will have uh, a few questions to ask of you as well. So, Facebook, uh, could you please uh, proceed? Who will make the presentation? Uh, Good morning, Senator Risa. Yes, Ms. Claire, Claire Ms. Amador. All right, please uh, proceed. Thank you. Uh, good morning, honorable members of the committee and to everyone present here, our colleagues in the child safety space. Thank you for inviting us to join today's hearing and for having been allowed time to present. I also want to acknowledge Anna, Ria, and Kev's story. We want you to know that we hear you and that we see you. 
So safety is a top priority for us at Facebook, and we appreciate spaces like this to address questions, get feedback, and to share info about our work and see how the company has evolved from 10 years ago, and we still hope to improve. We want to let everyone know that we invest heavily in people, tools, and programs to safeguard our community and devote significant resources to ensure our platform offers a safe and positive experience, especially for children. We have built relationships with over 500 online safety orgs globally, including specialists in the prevention of bullying and child exploitation and in supporting victims. My colleague, Amber Hawks, head of safety for APAC, will present more information about our work with our peers in the private sector, government, um, NGOs, some of them are present here, and also law enforcement locally and around the globe. But before we get there, just to take a step back, at the onset, please know that we support and encourage the right and appropriate regulatory framework for child safety, the one that provides for a, safe, uh, for a systems-based approach that enables platforms, various platforms, to develop solutions suited to their particular service and community. We also support having a holistic approach to child safety, as it requires a broader societal response beyond regulation and should include, among others, uh, user education, digital literacy, and victim remediation. So not many people are aware of the extensive work around safety that Facebook does, and I am here alongside a few members of our team to address queries and to share information. We are committed to working with this committee to craft appropriate policies. And so I will now invite my colleague, Amber, to talk a bit more about our work. Maraming salamat po. Salamat, uh, Ms. Claire, Ms. Amber, please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair and Senators. Um, I just flag that my colleague, um, Mr. Chris Kujapili, needs access to share my slides. Um, so it would be great if he could be given permission to share a deck. Kung sec, baki enable lang makashare si Mr. Kujapili. Are you able to share screen now, Ms. Amber? Um, Chris, can you share? Just checking. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Kuzupili. Uh, not, not quite yet, he's saying. Um, but I'm just going to hopefully that that rectifies, and and I'll I'll just share because I don't want to take up any more time. Um, All right, please begin then. Uh, great, thank you. Um, so just to start with, um, as Claire mentioned, it's a very much a commitment of ours um, to uh, keep people safe on our services. More than 35,000 people work on security and safety at Facebook, including experts in law enforcement and child protection. Um, we're focused in particular on uh, three areas when we approach online safety. Prevention, as has been discussed here already, um, detection, and response. Um, and so we want to prevent the harm from happening before it um, occurs wherever possible. Um, it's much better to stop it um, before than to detect it after the fact. Um, and of course, then we want to keep detecting it as it happens and then respond to it promptly. And the way that we do the work in those areas is to work across four pillars. One is our partnerships the next is our policies, um, that's our community standards, what is and isn't allowed on the platforms, and our tooling, which is both the user-facing tooling um, and also our artificial intelligence and machine learning that operates to detect violating content, and then our resources that we are providing um, education to people during um, in-app, um, but also resources to um, victim survivors as well. Um, you know, we have partnered with many um, locally in the Philippines and continue to do so um, uh, with ministries such as the Department of Education, um, Department of ICT, um, with Stairway, uh, with IJM, Save the Children, um, Child Rights Network, and many organizations that help us inform our approach to our policies and our tooling and our resources. Just a note 
in response to you know the many um, inputs that we've heard today, and I really appreciate and also say that we hear um, the stories and the testimony that have been shared by victim survivors here, that our policies, our community standards, um, do not allow um, any form of child exploitation. So we remove all content that's located that depicts or promotes child sexual exploitation. We don't allow grooming, as Ace uh, was just sharing. We don't allow um, grooming, so solicitation um, of sexual images or content um, or engagement in, in text um, between minors and adults. Um, and of course, this includes not allowing sextortion, which is one of the examples that we heard earlier of the, the blackmailing and the threats to share the images um, are against our policy, even without the actual images being shared. So um, it goes beyond this, in that our policies are comprehensive. We don't even allow child nudity, for example, of toddlers in the bath. Um, it, some people might think that's innocuous, but we don't want that to be misappropriated and abused by others. Um, and we also have policies that um, prevent um, the sharing and um, require the removal of any content that's um, used for human exploitation, which is human trafficking, um, child sexual sex trafficking, Anything that um, actually would be content covering the recruitment, the facilitation or the exploitation. And this, of course, covers illegal um, adoption of babies as well, this policy. Um, we don't allow uh, sex offenders on our platforms either. So if we're informed by law enforcement, this was a point raised earlier about sex offender registries. If we have knowledge that the sex offender is on our site, then we will remove them. Um, and prevent them from recreating accounts. And, of course, one of the big topics today, we have policies around authenticity, um, requiring people to use their authentic identity on Facebook um, so that um, we can limit the abuse. And, in fact, you know, last quarter alone removed 1.3 billion fake accounts using our technology. Amber, if I could just quickly jump in with a follow-up question to Ria about something mm. you just mentioned. Sure. Uh, thank you. Ria, um, so Facebook says they don't allow sextortion or blackmailing or threats. Did you try to report those Facebook chats to Facebook? Uh, yes, I did. This was back in 2013, so I don't think their direct legal assistance was as quick as it is now. I actually went to the NBI first, but they told me that to get a, a legal verification request to Facebook through the DOJ, it would have taken six months. All right. Thank you, Ria. And maybe we'll get back to NBI about that later as well. Salamat. Yeah. Ms. Amber, please, please proceed. Thank you, Ria. And yes, we have been working very hard um, over the last several years to improve our response in this space. And um, I think what I can point to right now is that we have our user reports that notify us of content, but we also have been upgrading and implementing our technology that proactively identifies this kind of content um, to be able to remove it. So, uh, Chris, I can see you have the presentation. So if you can go to slide nine, That'd be great. Um, we remove um, the we we detect the content using artificial intelligence or user reports. Um, most of those, whether that's flagged, either way, it's reviewed within 24 hours in most cases. And of the 35,000 people that we have working with us, over 15,000 are content reviewers. They work 24/7 on a follow the sun model um, in over 50 languages um, to review that content. And of course. Um, some cases require um, language um, capacity, such as grooming, maybe to understand what's going on, but others, such as images, don't really require, you know, language capacity at all, and so they can be reviewed by any of our content reviewers. So, you know, technology is, of course, our business, and we use it to prevent and detect and respond um, to these areas of, you know, child sexual exploitation and human trafficking. For example, we're one of the early adopters of photo DNA. Um, we've been using it since 2011. Um, when a photo is found to be of child sexual exploitation, the content is deleted, the account is taken down, and we report it to the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children. And then in turn, NECMEC works with law enforcement agencies around the world to refer that back out and help find 
um, and rescue victims and inform investigations. We actually use one of the largest databases of image hashes for this kind of imagery um, in the world. And then when we use our own artificial intelligence to detect new um, as not yet known child exploitation imagery that pops up on the platform, we can then also add those hashes um, to our database so that those images cannot be reshared again across our platforms. Um, and then we also use our artificial intelligence to identify potential grooming um, and so that we can remove accounts engaged in that and to do what we call, you can see on the next slide, black holing links that are associated. So maybe some of these other sites that were mentioned today might have, um, you know, a collection of images on them and we would routinely prevent or black hole access to those links um, from um, from Facebook and, and our services. And we will also use our technology to interrupt searches and limit the discoverability of, say, minor accounts um, and also to upsell now that reporting and that education element that we've seen is so critical so that people know they can report, they know what options are available to them. You can just see on the next slide very quickly what this safety and search looks like. If someone was to go in and um, search for, you know, a child abuse term um, for that kind of content, this pop-up comes up instead, instead of delivering results, sharing with them the impact of child abuse material, that it's illegal, and deferring them and referring them, in fact, to resources um, if they have their own, you know, thoughts about sexual thoughts about children, that they can get help. The next slide shows you the kind of pop-up that I'm talking about within Messenger. Um, when there's suspicious activity, our systems might detect um, a potentially harmful interaction um, between an adult and a minor, um, and then this pop-up would occur to say, you know, do you know this person? Um, if they do not, then um, they're directed to uh, further education about how to report and recognize harassment. This technology. Ms. Amber, do you yeah. have similar safeguards for your other uh, messaging app, WhatsApp? Because after all, these two, Messenger and WhatsApp, are the main uh, of your platforms anyway that make it easier to distribute exploitative material. So, do you have similar safeguards for WhatsApp? Um, WhatsApp um, content. Um, is encrypted within the message. However, there are safety notices that pop up um, in WhatsApp saying, you know, a new um, a new contact is made, uh, an account created, and um, a notice will pop up um, notifying someone immediately, do they want to report or block this account? So okay. um, that's how it operates on WhatsApp. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Um, this technology is particularly important um, to detection because we can see in our last community standards enforcement report that in the last quarter of um, 2020, we removed 5.4 million pieces of child nudity and sexual exploitation content. 98.8% of that was removed before it was reported to us. Um, and it's important to note when I share these um, large numbers that the prevalence of this content, thankfully, is still very low. So out of every 10,000 views of content on Facebook, we would estimate that no more than five of those views contained content that would violate this policy. Um, we've talked a lot about, you know, our um, cooperation with law enforcement already from the other um, presentations, and I just wanted to clarify how we work in this space. Um, Ms. Amber, if, uh, if you don't mind, I'd just like to call San Kiko to uh, raise a point. Yes, yes San Kiko. Yes, uh, of this 5.4 million pieces of content removed, would you have data uh, as to the Philippines? Because uh, uh, the, uh, the information that we have received from uh, the UN uh, and uh, uh, you know, well, uh, children's advocacy and welfare rights uh, group is that we are actually a, a leading uh, a leading entity, the country, uh, in terms of uh, trafficking and exploitation of children. So, so San Kiko, you know, we're actually I mean, called a global hotspot. Precisely. So, you know, uh, that 5.4 million that we removed uh, may look small, you know, in the context of the entire 
world, but how much of that is from, from the Philippines? If 30% or 20% of that would be from the Philippines, I don't know. Then that's not a small number for us. Yeah, um, understood. We don't um, have those figures per country. Often what um, those figures are based on is um, a report um, that the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children does put out numbers per country um, of the cyber tips that have resolved back to the Philippines. And I'll explain what that means. So in the next slide, you can see how, how it works, actually. So but Ms. Amber, speaking of yeah. uh, NECMEC and related to San Kiko's question, I remember in the first hearing it was also brought up that uh, NECMEC uh, automatically reports to the U.S. side but doesn't yet at least automatically report to the Philippine side. And uh, I remember that our law enforcement authorities had the desire that they, they in fact also automatically report to the Philippines so that the important data that uh, Santi was asking about should immediately be at our fingertips. Yes. Um, so, in fact, um, that data is automatically available currently to Philippines law enforcement. It's accessible through the NECMEC case management tool, which sits with the Department of Justice. And I'm sure that my colleague Rob can jump in to um, clarify. But you can see here on the screen um, that basically what happens is an incident occurs so that it's detected um, online. The report is made to the NECMEC cyber tip line. It's prioritised, um, you know, based on severity um, and urgency um, and the value of it. Um, uh, additional value is added to try and find the location or the reported user. Um, then uh, NECMEC system will find the appropriate um, jurisdiction that it relates to um, and then the report will be made back out to the local jurisdiction um, in the Philippines. And as I said, um, that sits currently um, with the DOJ and they have access to that through the NECMEC um, case management tool um, currently. Those cyber tips um, will they include information, as we've discussed, like an IP address, phone number, an email address in some cases, um, things that can provide law enforcement with, you know, helpful investigative leads um, to find and rescue the victims. Um, uh, we've heard about the, the next step of the process where they obviously, um, law enforcement needs to go and do their investigation to, to home in, but, or, but this is information that supports um, the, those investigations. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of, I'll jump in to uh, clarify really quickly what these numbers are. Before I just just quick to that point. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kiko. Uh, yeah, just very quickly, just an observation, because uh, as was pointed out earlier by the chair, uh, you know, our DOJ uh, NBI representative uh, felt or, or manifested otherwise that uh, so, so there has to be, you know, there seems to be a, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the right hand not knowing what the left hand is doing because uh, uh, Facebook says this is available to the DOJ, but the NBI says, or at least a representative of the NBI said in the previous hearing, that uh, the reporting of Facebook is to the U.S. based NMEC and not, uh, not to the Philippines. So we will have to clarify this with the DOJ uh, Madam Chairperson, just for just uh, putting it out there. Thank you. Yes, thank you, San Kiko. So, uh, Ms. Amber, could you continue and maybe wrap up? Yes, sure. Um, just to make the quick point that of these um, millions of, you know, pieces of content um, that we're talking about, um, important to note that more than 90% of that is actually, you know, reshares of content previously reported. That means we are catching it, but what it means is that in these numbers of millions of reports, the technology that registers each report and hashes each of the image registers those as, um, you know, distinct images, whereas to the human eye, those images would actually be the same. So the good news about this, of course, is that, you know, there's a lot lower number of images than the number of reports that we, we do hear about. Um, and, you um, 
of course, any number of reports is problematic and we're, we will continue to work on that um, uh, on our side and have to work as an ecosystem to address that. Um, but it's important to know, like, the real situation, I think. And the other part of it is that many of the reports involve people sharing with non-malicious intent. Um, this is really critical because it helps us to just, you know, a target as an ecosystem, all of us, our interventions. Um, and... I just wanted to make a quick note here, the kind of interventions that we have um, looked at and are, are working towards now in relation to, you know, um, some of the, the, the stories that we heard before. Um, one of them, for example, is how do we support children more? Um, one way we can do this is with a pilot that we've run when there is what we call self-generated child exploitation imagery, for example, um, we're looking at ways and have run a pilot where people can actually proactively report that um, they're worried this could get out there. Um, we can actually take, um, take through this process a digital fingerprint of that image and prevent it from ever being reshared um, because we want to prevent um, it from getting out of control. And as you know, we've heard today from um, being shared across platforms. And one of the ways we could do this in the future through NECMEC potentially um, is really important because NECMEC is able to share those hashes across industry, um, which again makes it harder for those images to jump and then appear on other platforms um, if more technology companies participate um, in that. And so just to wrap up, I, I did want to just focus on um, the fact that we, beyond providing resources on our safety centre, such as um, information for, you know, um, survivors of sextortion and, and um, the sharing of um, non-consensual intimate images and how they might preserve evidence. We have safety centres and help centres for those. We have programming um, in relation to education um, and digital literacy and online safety risks that we've um, engaged with our partners um, in the Philippines and around the world. Um, I wanted to finish on a final point about that cooperation with law enforcement. Um, and that is that, um, Chris, if you can go back to slide 20, um, this is what, you know, I think you, may, you raised a point that um, there needs to be clarity clarity on who receives these reports. There is a case management tool that allows for triaging of these reports for local law enforcement. Our role is to think through how do we help law enforcement prioritise um, and uh, classify these cyber tips ahead of time so that they can then go out and investigate. And then I'll ask Rob, just to dump, jump in for this last slide, just to talk about collaboration with law enforcement. Yeah. And Senators, thank well, you so thank much. Thank you, Ms. Amber. Okay, Mr. Abrams, you have the floor. Could you, you I wonder if you could do this in one more minute, so just I'm so we can York, move to some follow-up questions yeah. for Facebook. Please proceed. No problem. Um, the way sort of things are, are set up now is I work directly with the various anti-cybercrime task forces. When they send to me matters like sextortion or child exploitation, that is not going to involve a data request. So they will send public safety matters directly to me that I then action by getting to our safety teams. Uh, this is what you referred to earlier in our meeting as the takedown requests. Uh, the frustration I think we all have in the Republic of the Philippines is the laws in your country are such that agencies like PNP and NBI require a full-on search warrant for access to subscriber information. That's that user data in for instance, in reports, or what's responsive to Philippines' um, legal process. Um, I think it would be best for the communities that we're trying to serve in the Philippines if law enforcement had um, a method that's perhaps extrajudicial and more in line with the modern cybercrime threat. So there are other markets, for example, um, here in ASEAN that don't require a full-on search warrant, but a summons will do or a subpoena will do. In some markets, just a police letter will do. Um, and of course, the guardrails are such that we use these specifically for child exploitation uh, and human trafficking cases. And it allows the police to be a whole lot more uh, nimble. I will agree with what our colleague said earlier that, um, you know, handing over IP addresses isn't necessarily the panacea, the silver bullet. But it does allow law enforcement to move their, their case progress along far more, far more quickly um, than 
the current system, which requires a very arduous search warrant. Um, we can have an, auto, we have an automated system that many uh, law enforcement agents in your country would be aware of called LIORS. It's an automated intake for um, legal process, so search warrants, subpoenas, that type of thing. We can also accept preservation uh, requests through that and even emergency requests. Um, there are times when lawful and appropriate, we will proactively escalate real emergencies uh, to law enforcement, including the PNP. And agents are rather positions like mine are constantly um, engaging with PNP and NBI. Um, I think just in the last half, we did three trainings for NBI. Um, so, yeah, it's an ongoing relationship that uh, certainly has room to grow. But I think the fact that uh, we're all constantly looking to sit down and brainstorm the way forward is is not only exciting, it's definitely the interest of public safety. Um, but for me, I really think law enforcement um, could have a better less arduous uh, way to access data than they than they currently have. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Abrams. And thank you also for pointing out how safeguards remain important in terms of protecting um, civil liberties and uh, while enabling more effective law enforcement uh, in order to protect children and, and minors. Please do stay around at the same uh, Ms. Amber, because uh, I, I do have, and I believe my colleagues have further questions for or about Facebook, but I, I, I know that uh, our Google resource person has to leave shortly. So could I just ask uh, at least a question? Uh, there I see uh, Attorney Gonzalez. Uh, Google Drive attorney was used to store child abuse uh, exploitation material uh, in the cases of Kevin and uh, Ria no? for, for minors as well. How does Google deal with this, the misuse of the Google Drive? Thank you. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you. So uh, Google does remove uh, content from Google Drive as soon as it is reported to us. So we recommend that um, people who experience this uh, should file a report using the legal reporting mechanism available to all our users. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be on the instance of the victim survivor herself or himself. Or Not necessarily, proactive na pagmo monitor ang Google. Not necessarily, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So, um, if if um, if a concerned citizen or any any concerned party wants to file a ticket or a report, um, it does not need to be at the instance of the victim in the situation. All right, but still, it has to come from outside Google. Kumbaga, you don't have any internal proactive monitoring uh, to make sure that Google Drive isn't used for such exploitative materials? Um, we'd like to reserve um, our answer to that in our position paper because it is a technical mm -hmm. matter and we will submit a position paper that explains the intricacies regarding um, how machine learning can be used uh, for Google Drive. Thank you, Attorney Gonzalez. The committee will anticipate that position paper. Please bear in mind yung concern natin to bring the tech and the law enforcement side closer together since this was identified by our different resource persons, including Ria herself, the two major areas that have to work together effectively uh, to stop these crimes and to bring justice to the victim survivors. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, and before you leave, attorney, uh, San Kiko, I would like to also yes. raise some points. San Kiko. Yes. Uh, just to pursue that uh, uh, point about a more proactive response, uh, rather than just uh, rely on reports. Uh, I would like to think that uh, you know, Google being a billion dollar company should, uh, should look to more proactive responses. Uh, you know, the difficulty with reporting, uh, as was earlier manifested uh, in, 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 in some of the experiences, it'll take several months. Uh, but if there is a proactive uh, uh, immediate takedown response from Google and all other media platforms. You know, the, the, the term is immediate takedown. And, uh, uh, and uh, relying on reporting alone, I think, is, you know, is, uh, uh, is uh, less than ideal, uh, considering that you have the technology and you have, you know, you have the resources. Relying on the citizens to, to be vigilant is great because they ought to be vigilant, but the technology out there is sometimes just too powerful and too overwhelming for a, a one or two or you know individuals to be able to respond effectively. 
so that's if I could add to that, San Kiko, uh, because I the chair shares uh, San Kiko's assessment. After all, virality is the business of the social media platforms, and when it's a good thing, it's great. You know, it can it can spark, say, like people power events, but. When the virality is in aid of this kind of exploitation, then it becomes really a, what our resource persons described earlier, no, it becomes like a lifetime nightmare because the material is out there in the universe and through the virality can, you know, take on a life of its own and just become overwhelming. Which brings you to one question or one issue, the right to be forgotten. Um, when, when Maria was was uh, talking about her experience 10 years ago. It, it's, it's as if it was just, uh, you know, last week. Uh, but precisely because of information, communication technology and digital technology, anything that happened 10 years ago can just come back uh, to you as if it happened yesterday because of the sharing and resharing, etc. So, you know, these, these are... Uh, reporting alone, I think, is a, is a cop-out. Uh, in fact, law enforcement by itself is already, you know, uh, rather than prevention, it's already the cure. And we all know the, you know, saying that the prevention is better than cure. So I guess part of prevention is immediate takedown because you prevent the spread, you prevent the, you know, potentially billions of your uh, subscribers or your, your you know, uh, uh, to have access to that information that is private to one individual. Yes, San Kiko. And uh, Attorney Gonzalez, before you respond to San Kiko's point, I see you have something up here. But uh, friends, please allow me to flash something that our office received just now involving minors sharing their videos in exchange for study or for load. So it says here, um, hi, I'm an RPer. There's the secret word in FB, Facebook, na created years ago, mostly for teenagers kami doon. We call it RPW, or role player world. We make a dummy account. We make a dummy account or fake. Basta gumagamit kami ng ibang info, pero hindi po kami nagpo-poser. Hidden po talaga ang identity ng mga RPer. Then in RPW, meron RR or yung red, red room or bune room. Lahat ng hindi pwede sa bata, lahat ng hindi pwede sa bata nandun, you can search it on FB. It's a group page, madami yon. In that page, madaming teenagers ang nagbebenta ng nudes. Mga vids nila or VC in exchange of money or load for study at this time of online learning. Ha? Or for some other reasons, yung iba dahil gusto lang nila. And sadly, I'm one of those teenagers. So this is the one who sent us uh, this. I do it for money, but I'm using other accounts back then to Miguel. Din po ako. To Miguel din po ako last year. Then I deleted that account. I make another RP account. Honestly, this world is our escape from reality na puro hirap lang. One of my clients before, nag-chat sa uli sa akin. Di ko alam kung nakilala niya po ako or ano basta. O basta naging kami dito. Tinatakot niya po, tinatakot niya po ako na ikakalat yung mga video kapag di ko sinusunod ang gusto niya. Palagi po ako nagdadahilan. Nagpapanggap na mahal ko siya at okay kami. Hindi naman talaga. Please po, help niyo po ako. So this person is observing our team, no? Kahit hindi siya makasuhan, kung meron man po. Basta po yung about sa videos, alam ko po may kasalanan ako, pero para nun po awa ayoko na ng mga pinapagawa niya. Kung mapapansin niyo man ito. So, um, just to get back to you, Attorney Gonzalez, you know, San Kiko was just asking, um, will you continue just to rely on individual reporting or another concerned person reporting? Pag ganitong kaso, imagine ino-observe lang yung hearing natin, nalaman na nandito kayo, mga social media platforms, and uh, humihingi siya talaga ng uh, saklolo. So could you, so, okay, get back to your presentation now and please address... Um, uh, San Kiko's question. I'm sorry, this was Facebook, okay? Uh, speaking of the... the what, uh, thank you, what the, What was mentioned earlier about sharing across platforms. So this is for um, Facebook. Uh, Attorney Gonzalez, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Miss Amber, would you would you like to address this? Yes, I mean, we, we do run proactive detection um, across our groups. Um, 
Facebook groups um, and other services across Facebook that detect um, words related to um, solicitation um, and abuse. Um, and so that is something that we're constantly working to update. But another thing that I think is really critical here is an understanding um, by those sharing and also by those receiving um, of the impact of what is actually happening um, and of the illegality of it potentially as well. Um, one of the new things that we have just introduced is um, a safety alert um, in Messenger. And this is actually if someone has um, shared non-maliciously, potentially they've forwarded on um, some kind of image like that to someone else. Um, they get um, an education um, about the impact of that sharing um, and its illegality um, because I, you know, I'm hearing what the Senator was saying um, earlier about prevention and the need to bring down the number of these images circulating and that that is essentially a prevention as well. So these are the types of um, intervention that we're continuing to introduce um, that would actually um, upsell education on the impact and the reporting of this content and hopefully deter people from sharing, as well as at the same time continuing a proactive detection of the content to bring it down. Thank you, Ms. Amber. Um, uh, uh, I think our committee will need to work with you on this particular case. This is a young person, a student, observing our hearing who is asking for help. So we'll leave it at that for now. But we I also can now. Yes, uh, Sen Aimee, I, I will uh, call you uh, right away. Oh, just sorry, to tell sorry. the whole committee. It's all right. No problem, Sen Aimee. Just to tell the whole committee that we checked now and Red Room Byun, which was communicated by that young person is open and active. So, and there are, Fine. at this moment, there are 7,000 members in the room. So, wow, really. All right, Sen Aimi, please. Yes, I, um, I, uh, I'm very deeply concerned about this problem, as you're well aware. And I'm also getting any number of texts as we speak, Madam Chair, just like you. And I think it's uh, incumbent upon us to uh, urgently pass the amendments to the uh, uh, child code as well as the uh, trafficking laws so that uh, we can hold ISPs jointly and severally liable if necessary, impose prison sentences and just uh, and not just meager fines because they don't seem to frighten off anyone. Uh, yesterday in a hearing about the OFWs, for example, um, I'd like to share with the chairwoman and Senator Kiko our alarm at the fact that uh, illegal recruitment has gone out of fashion, which is the good news. The bad news, however, is that trafficking is on the uptick and uh, trafficking and essentially human bondage and slavery has uh, really become very prevalent. And uh, what is most depressing is perhaps the uh, misery of the conviction number, Senator Kiko, out of 57 uh, preliminary investigations in 2019, dalawa lang ang so talagang napakamiserable nito. I'm certain that in cyberspace this will be even more difficult. Um, I wanted to mention also what the kids are now calling, tinitext po sa akin, revenge porn as a whole other subsector. And the concern of the DOJ as well as the police is the fact that so many of the perpetrators are in fact minors. So uh, we have to think very, very well about how they should be punished if it's only Facebook that has responsibility or if in fact the state and uh, we through uh, new laws can actually put a stop to this new fashion as it were. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much also, Sen Aimee. Currently, the bill thinks of uh, children involved in this, uh, uh, doing the uh, self-generated material that Ms. Amber mentioned, as victims, not as perpetrators. And But we look very uh, closely uh, into rehabilitation uh, of these children with the inputs of Sen Aimee and all, all colleagues here. Uh, Attorney Gonzalez, if you're still here. Uh, yes, I, I see you still here. Uh, could you please uh, respond to the points raised earlier by San Kiko? I believe you had something up on the screen also to share yes, with the committee. Thank you. Um, so we, we agree um, that proactiveness is uh, part of our responsibility. So just as an example on YouTube, 
um, in the fourth quarter of 2020, uh, 9.3 million videos were removed for policy violations, with 8.8 or 94% of those being removed automatically. They were automatically detected by our systems through machine learning technology, while the rest were flagged by users, trusted flaggers, NGOs, and government agencies. So out of, for this reporting period, 41% of the videos removed uh, were for violations of our child safety policies. So we do agree that proactiveness um, is uh, de definitely important in this, uh, in this battle that we're facing. Thank you, Attorney Gonzalez, and to you, San Kiko's word, uh, it's good that we, we should, should be more proactive. Maybe you could break the figures down for the committee, even if in submission, in writing, how much of this is accounted for by activity in the Philippines, in Philippines' uh, uh, virtual space. Um, okay, I, I, there was something else I wanted to share with you, but I, I lost my train of thought there. It's Okay, so um, I'll well, return to okay. that point later. But... Uh, I'd like to ask DOJ to... Oh, yes, San Kiko, before I ask DOJ to respond yes, to something yes, from San Go, San Kiko, yes, just, please. A quick uh, clarification. Uh, do you have data uh, from Google of the nine... Uh, can we have that slide again? 8.8 uh, .8 million that were taken down uh, as a follow-through. How many of those taken down uh, eventually uh, was... Uh, uh, up again, using another, <laughs> you know, you, you, you have, what, several years of experience in this. Uh, I'd like to think you also have that data, that uh, as soon as you bring down one, because that's a complaint, uh, that you bring down one, they just create a new one. Uh, so my, my concern here is perhaps you're just running in place. I don't know. Uh, that, yes, you've been able to take down 94%, but uh, how much of that? Uh, resurfaced uh, with a new, you know, with a new account, and uh, uh, are you actually able to monitor that? Uh, because, like I said, you have several years of, of uh, data out there, and uh, it's you know the beauty of digital technology is the footprints are all there. It's just a matter of putting it all together, uh, as I understand it, and uh, you know, uh, and having the proper algorithms or the proper you know, uh, uh, technology to be able to bring them together. So my, my concern is, yes, that's 94% were machine detected, 8.8 .8 million were taken, taken down. Uh, maybe the next question is how many were uh, uh, and are actively operating? Because that's what uh, the information that we are receiving on the ground. As soon as one is taken down, another one is just created, and then they go. And then, uh, you know, and the whole, the whole technology of bots, and, uh, you know, uh, authentic behavior just repeats itself. They're able to, you know, uh, rise like a phoenix. And, uh, and then you have to take them down again. You know, my, my question really is, uh, have you are you running in place? Um, thank you for thank you for that question. So if if we were, if we would be allowed to share, um, so CSI match. Um, what we do is we work with our partners in the in the industry such as Reddit and Adobe to have a shared industry repository of the hashes of known CSAM content. So through this, we can reduce the repetitive reviews of that known content already, as well as to speed up the detection process. And so that's on the partners and the technology side. On the, on the NGO side, naman, we also provide the content safety API that for our partner NGOs to who review these potentially illegal content, they're able to actually uh, be able to prioritize and be able to triage which content should be reviewed. Um, and so what we've seen is this has created, uh, this has enabled NGOs to be seven times faster in reviewing potentially CSAM content. So we do have technologies in place to, to especially on known CSAM content, to be able to automatically um, remove them, um, not just in our platforms, but also with our industry platforms. Yeah. Um, yes, and, and therefore, you know, if you have also information uh, that will help us better understand what we're dealing with, uh, if you have data that you've taken down 8.8% million uh, of that 8.8 .8 million you took down do you have data regarding how many of them actually resurfaced and are operating or were able to operate again uh, and had to be reported again you know that i don't know if you have that data but it would be good to have that so that you have a sense we have a sense of precisely what we're dealing with in terms of all these uh, fake accounts being uh, sprouting left and right 
If I may add to your question, Sen Kiko, Attorney Gonzalez, do you have a way of blacklisting material that you already previously took down para hindi siya pwedeng paulit-ulit lang na i-upload ulit? So this is uh, what CSI match is, ma'am. So basically, with CSI match, um, we already have the hash of the material. Um, and again, we share it even with partners. So that even if the partner, let's say, um, Reddit, um, if the material is new to Reddit, but they already have the hash, then Reddit systems can automatically remove the material as well, even without it being um, reviewed on their side. Yeah, maybe maybe in the future you should consider that uh, uh, part of your yes, we've taken out in billion to recognize uh, five million to service you know, just make sense uh, of the data because it does sound nice. You were able to bring down eight point eight, but we all know that this, you know, that the modus operandi is they just set up another account. So, so anyway, uh, I, I just wanted that out there. Uh, uh, the gentleman does, uh, need not respond uh, because he's already uh, somehow clarified some of the items that I raised. Thank you, uh, Senki. Thank you. thank you. And thank you, uh, Attorney Gonzalez. So uh, moving forward, we'll see how any existing best practices uh, can be either acknowledged or included uh, in the committee report, uh, but certainly there are further gaps that we all want to close uh, within and between uh, the tech side and the law enforcement side. So could I ask DOJ to respond to one of the uh, issues that said Aimi just previously raised? Should we hold ISPs liable? Anong perspective ng Justice Department jaan? Will it be uh, USEC-M or... Uh, ASEC. Uh... ASEC T. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Senator Senator Vista. Um, yes. Good afternoon. Uh, with this, in response to in response to Senator Ayn's questions on the liability of the ISPs um, under RA 9775, the ISPs do have some liabilities. So they have some obligations that are expected of them. Uh, this includes the obligation to preserve data, the, the obligation to, to report, to report instances of, of child pornography online, as well as the obligation to to to, imp, to impose a blocking and filtering software on on, on their uh, impose to, to to install such software. So, Madam Chair, no, in, in accordance with these obligations under 9775, there are some liabilities in the part of, on the part of the ISP. Meaning, ASIC, if they don't preserve the data, if they don't report violations, if they don't install and operate that blocking software, that there will be uh, there will be uh, penalties uh, for for these ISPs. That is correct, Your Honor. In fact, I understand that these ISPs have recently been um, been been cited no? been cited by the by the NPC no? for the for the possibility of imposing penalties on them. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Asik. Could I ask... Madam Chair, Madam Chair... Yes, on Kiko. Please, please, yes, please go ahead. Yes, regarding ISPs, uh, again, you know, a lot of people are watching us, I guess, and they're texting us information uh, and they're concerned. Uh, please ask PLD, DOJ about Internet Protocol version 6. It can track specific IP addresses to deal with abusers. Uh ready to roll out na dapat. And then here's another one. Twitter, one of the biggest platforms for abuse of kids. Hashtags of baguettes will immediately reveal so many young boys peddling themselves. Twitter should be invited to explain, but their Philippine office, uh, not clear. In the U.S., such accounts are impossible. So, may we know about this, uh, what is this version 6? Uh, uh, to track protocol, internet protocol. Would the DOJ know this? Um, thank you, what Senator. Information we have on, thank you, Senator. What information, we have, what, what information we have on version 6 is it's reported to us by some of the members of IAFAT. 
Uh, this is a very technical matter, and I think one of the resources persons mentioned this earlier. But what I do remember from this is that the current version of IP technology that we use do not allow us to, to accurately identify which particular users are using a particular IP address. Um, because I understand that current IP technology, a particular IP address is shared by multiple users up to the thousands. The shift to this new form of IP technology, the IP6 that we hear of, would allow a more pinpoint identification of who the users of a particular IP address are that involve um, child pornography. Thank you, Asikti. What we're using now is the IPv4, and several of our resource persons these past two hearings have said there's a need to shift to IPv6 so that the subscribers can be identified. I think we can ask Attorney Angerine of NBI to uh, address this point. And the telcos. And yes, the telcos. Actually, I'd, I'd like to ask, uh, yes, uh, PLDT, Globe, Smart, uh, also to comment on holding the ISPs liable. But Attorney Angerine, first, if, if you could, please. Um, tell us a bit more about how the shift to IPv6 uh, on the tech side can aid also the law enforcement side. Attorney Angerine, are you still here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Uh, ma'am, just, uh, uh, Madam Chair, just a little correction. I am not from yes. the FBI, but from the oh. Office of Cybercrime, which is an yeah, office right. within the Department of Justice. All right. Thank um, you. Yes, ma'am. Further to what um, ASEC T has um, discussed earlier, the reason why the DOJ is advocating for the shift from IPv4 to IV, IPv6, IPv6 is because in official communications with PLDT and Globe Telecom, they attributed their failure to comply with their mandate to disclose um, computer data based on IP address due to the implementation of a technology, um, CGNAT technology. So they explained it that given the exhaustion of IP addresses under the IPv4, they are constrained to use a technology na parang bundle nila yung, yung users. So that a lot of users are you sharing one single public um, IPv4 address. So as a result, the internet service providers claim that they are unable to determine which of those subscribers' data among the thousand subscribers um, is using one single public address. And so nahihirapan sila in the preservation of the computer data related to the IP address and the disclosure of that preserved computer data. So we have the, 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 the Office of Cybercrime has been forwarding that the implementation in the Philippines of the IPv6 is the long-term solution to the yeah. online crime attribution challenge related to the um, CGNAT or this um, limitation because the IPv6 will offer a vast increase in the number of IP addresses which may enable one user the use of one IP address. Thank you, Attorney Angerine. So, mukhang susi yung pag-shift sa IPv6 dun sa sinabi kanina ni Ms. Jelen na uh, pagbasag sa anonymity ng mga perpetrators. Uh, so, thank you for that additional input about that. Um, unfortunately, San Kiko, we don't have Twitter with us, but the committee notes the, the uh, important information sent you ba about the hashtag baguettes, etc. So the committee will uh, reach out to Twitter. Unfortunately, they don't seem to have a Philippines office yet. If I'm, it's a regional office still. So, but we will uh, reach out to them. Yes, thank you. Yes, Madam Chairperson. Uh, earlier, you posted uh, the, the screenshot of, of that uh, Facebook page. Uh, may we get a response? Uh, so that, you know the public. We uh, apparently many people are watching, so they'd like to know. Uh, this is, I mean, this is now you know uh, a, a a good example of what uh, the public may learn from uh, what actions are to be taken. So there is a complaint. Uh, the the uh, page has been identified. It's raised there. It's a Facebook page. Uh, what is Facebook going to do about it? Uh, 
may we have a you know so that this will guide everyone else who who feel, or many others who are similarly situated and helpless and would not know what to do uh, this is a public hearing this is an opportunity for facebook to show uh, the action that it tends to take and uh, and, and so that it'll uh, serve as an example uh, how quick are you going to respond to this kind of complaint thank you san kiko yes miss amber were you able to check already um, the Red Room Beyond, which just a few minutes ago was open and active and with 7,000 members in the room? Actually, we'll flash a new post now from this group um, just to show. No? So it, this is the RPW Red Room now. Send sample. Mahirap na po na scam. Na scam na ako ng 500 five different sellers. Seller ka ba or what? Baka scammer ka ha? Palegit check na lang po. Kita no? Magkano? One night stand. Pa isa. Kubad na babae. Ugh. Pa, okay. Uh, you know, uh, 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 vulgar word for, for the sex act. And then here, sino gusto sumali sa GC ko? 17 to 19. So I suppose the ages, huh? 17 to 19 lang makipag-VC muna sa akin para malaman ko kung matanda na o hindi. So also on the RPW Red Room. Um, so there's, yeah, teaserhood. Avail my new contents for cheaper price. So there's a range of products and there's a price range. So, and the uh, Red Room, bids only. So active just 18 hours ago on Messenger. Thank you. Uh, yes, yes, please, Ms. Amber. Yeah, we're, we're following up on this as, as we speak right now and conducting an investigation. Um, it's still ongoing. Um, I, and I, we, we should be able to respond to that um, at some point. But I will say to you that... Um, even though we have the situation in this group where um, it looks like it potentially not not just minors but adults as well, our policies will cover that, and so does um, so does our um, proactive protection in certain circumstances. But um, we really appreciate the report on this, um, and we're following up. Um, I think it's really important for people to understand that reporting, so collaborating. Um, uh, our collaboration with safety partners, some of which are obviously on this call, um, is really mm -hmm. paramount, helping us to understand um, what we do with the, these partners is to help us understand the new trends, the various groups that arise. Um, if there is something um, you knew that is not being detected, often we will work with these partners on the ground to understand what's going on. And so uh, we'll be continuing to follow up. Regarding your ongoing investigation, Ms. Amber, um, how long is your turnaround time? Meaning, how long before the committee and other stakeholders can get feedback and a report on the actions taken against this activity? Um, absolutely. It should be within the next um, few hours. It shouldn't be long at all. Um, it's, it's already, um, action's already being taken. So, and we can report back once we've finalized what's going on. Thank you, Ms. Amber. Of course, in two hours, the hearing will certainly be over, but the committee looks forward to a, a copy of, of your report. I, I think I see, or hear, can't see, but I, I think I hear San Kiko. You, yes, please, San Kiko. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the two, account, two or three accounts that were showed, uh, you know, you don't get 7,500 followers overnight. Uh, you know, and... Uh, isn't there a more proactive response? You know, maybe if it was 2000, perhaps Facebook could have already looked into the material and uh, instead of waiting for it to reach 7,000, uh, yeah, we'll work it two hour, in two hours. That's great. And then we welcome that. But uh, shouldn't there be a better way uh, and, and not just have to rely on reports? Uh, you have the technology, you, 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 you know, Facebook is, is the fifth largest company in the world. Uh, and maybe you can fund a more proactive response. Uh, I'm sorry, I, again, 75,000 followers doesn't happen overnight. Uh, 
So it's probably yeah. been going yeah. on for quite some time. So so how 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 does that escape Facebook? How how does it you know and 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 if you look at the language, you know they're they're pretty graphic, uh, graphic enough for, for 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 it to be taken down by this committee hearing. Uh, so 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 I'm just concerned uh, because again on the ground your your policy is laudable, but uh, how much of that policy is actually translated into real? Uh, effective uh, monitoring and actual immediate take down, take taking down of these of these. Uh, I mean, that's the long and short of it. I think. Yes, um, you can see in that we we also I won't flash it up right now, but we we also have a transparency report which will, which covers the category also not only of child nudity and exploitation but also adult. Um, as well, so you can see how much content we're actually bringing down. So the technology is bringing down a lot of content. However, I would find that the way the technology works is that it learns each time. So each time it detects something, each time something is reported, the technology is like a, a baby growing up and becoming a toddler and then becoming an adult in terms of this on how to recognise um, different um, violations in different languages and in, in different contexts. And so um, it's not um, perfect. It's not as perfect as the human eye looking at this time. And so it's one of the limitations of the technology. But the more of the, of the reports that we get, it is about the more um, effective um, that the technology becomes. So, um, I, hear, I hear what you're saying. Um, and just the flag. There are limitations um, to technology, um, and then we'll look into this and see, um, if, you know, how we can take this to improve um, and what else can we move forward. Thank you, thank you. Um, and, and if we can have uh, updates on what you finally will do with that seven point five thousand uh, followers and the account and the report, thank you. Uh, yes, can I just um, jump in? I do have a report. Um, uh, the group was actually only created on the 24th of September. Um, so these things can happen quite rapidly in, in our terms, in terms of the amount of followers. Um, and um, 24th of December 2020, to clarify. Um, and the page has already been taken down. All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Amber. Senkiko, yes? No, no, well, uh, I have some other questions, but I'm still, uh, uh, I will I will yield uh, to, to you, ma'am, and to whoever. All right, thank you, Senkiko. But uh, I, I just can't keep up with the, with the chat uh, during our hearing, but for example, uh, Beth Angshoko of DSWP just posted that uh, it's uh, quite obvious that this RPW Red Room is used for OSAEC. An immediate takedown is in order. FB doesn't need hours uh, to investigate. So um, th there's really a lot of uh, very strong interest um, in being able to take effective tech and law enforcement actions. So could we return to uh, PLDT, Globe, and SMART to ask you to comment on holding the ISPs liable? Um, who will speak for PLDT? Attorney Eileen? Yes, ma'am, please. Madam Chair, good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I agree with uh, USEC, the DOJ uh, USEC, in that uh, RA9775 do have certain responsibilities and um, appropriate penalties for ISPs. But as uh, we have already mentioned in the several uh, committee hearings, including the TWG, uh, there, that law should uh, already be amended to... Uh, to be appropriate with the times because it only mentions ISPs, but there are a lot of other entities that do not fall within the category of ISPs. ISP, mm -hmm. technically, uh, Your Honor, only means those provider of internet service, the pipes, those mm -hmm. that allow one person to uh, be able to reach a website. But the contents, the OSAIC materials and contents are, are in those websites, in those content providers hosted by internet content hosts. 
posts and they are not ISPs. So perhaps the folly, the difficulty in implementation of the law with respect to penalizing and holding people responsible is that the law should already be amended to put specific responsibilities and liabilities to specific companies. For example, for ISPs, their liability is definitely to block. They should be able to block when they are asked to block, when they are given a list of websites and URLs to block, they should be able to block that. They can also report, as I mentioned the last hearing, unusual data traffic in certain rural or barangay areas where there used to be no traffic because it can be a sign of an ongoing uh, video or live streaming of OSAIC uh, materials. Uh, the uh, they can also ISPs can also get in touch with like Interpol, IWF, NICMIC in order to get lists of sites and URLs to blocks and for them to collate all this so that it does not happen again. Whether this particular uh, contents uh, get uh, routed by a different uh, mode or uh, uh, posted in different sites, it should be able to block that for, uh, uh, for, uh, for as long as it's the same URL. So those are the things that ISPs can do. What ISPs cannot do is they cannot look into the content, Your Honor. And I think uh, this has been explained also, not just by the industry uh, uh, uh members of the industry like us, uh, Smart and Globe also, but also by the regulators like the NTC, and the BICC have already also explained the difficulty of an ISP and how uh, the other types of internet uh, service uh, companies, not providers, internet uh, companies can uh, help, like, for example, internet co uh, content hosts, social media platforms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we took a lot of time during the last TWG in identifying this uh, in uh, different types of entities and what specific obligations should they be accountable for. When I, I believe that when this law eventually passes into a law, when this bill eventually passes into a law, it will be a better bill, it will be a better law, because this time, whoever is responsible for each type of uh, activity that lends to the spread of all these nefarious contents will now be able to uh, uh, answer and be able to be penalized by the law. Your Honor, just, uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Eileen. Yes, uh, we need to identify towards the end of this uh, this inquiry, uh, th this hearing, who uh, can, who will be willing and able, mandated by the law, to look into the content um, with the full uh, force of the law. Because, for example, uh, the red rooms, the one we showed was just one of apparently several. All red rooms are public groups, and they seem to be very brazen, hiding behind... Uh, anonymous account. So who is going to put uh, a stop to that kind of abusive and exploitative behavior online? Uh, could we hear now from uh, the representative of GLOBE, Attorney Tubayan, on that uh, uh, first issue of um, uh, holding ISPs liable? Yes, Madam Chairman, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, I should say. Good, yes, uh, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon as well to the members of the committee and to our fellow resource persons. I echo the statement of Attorney Aldean of, of PLTT regarding the role of uh, ISPs or telecoms. And we provide the highway. Internet is rightly called the uh, information highway. And that's what uh, ISPs essentially do. But as to the content, of that highway, all those who pass through that highway are various content providers, various platforms, various social media platforms. So there are various actors in this ecosystem of uh, internet. So it, uh, I agree that we need to parse through the law and uh, come up with a better version of the law, uh, hopefully by identifying the various actors and their res responsibilities. And because, as pointed out by resource persons uh, in the previous hearing, this is not just the role of the ISPs, nor of uh, content providers, but the whole of society. The whole of society. It, it is a collaborative effort among all members of society. Because all of us with a smartphone has a capability of uploading uh, 
materials that are osaic or sesame. So uh, we need to cut through the chase by identifying where these are produced in this country and the consumers of this sesame and uh, uh, osaic materials and cut the cord. So uh, we fully support and we will, uh, the revisions pro uh, pro uh, proposed in the various bills and uh, we hope to continue our participation in the technical working group, uh, Madam Chair, Madam Chair. So that will be uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you also, uh, Attorney Tobayan, and also that um, offer that you mentioned at the end, which the committee will continue to rely on the participation uh, of uh, the, the telcos uh, all the way up to the technical a working group, you know, and speaking of highways, even on certain kinds of highways, there are certain kinds of vehicles that we don't allow. So, uh, an addition, an additional uh, question for the telcos, uh, both Globe and PLDT might want to return to it after I ask the smart resource person. What incentives could we give to get the private sector to be even more proactive? So, uh, could I ask now the resource person from Smart to speak? Yes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Mr. Ibai. Please. Yes. Good, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, uh, we thank you for uh, inviting us to be part of this uh, Senate hearing. So uh, in addition to what my colleagues uh, uh, in the industry, uh, uh, PLDT and GLOBE uh, has already mentioned, yes, we, we actually uh, support this ongoing um, amendment uh, hearing particularly because as the original law was enacted uh, in 2009, a lot of uh, uh, events have already probably uh, uh, happened that uh, makes it timely now for, for the law to be, to be amended. In fact, two years after the anti-child porn law was uh, enacted, in 2012, the Data Protection Act or the Data Privacy Law was uh, also enacted. And so this also added to the problem of how uh, ISPs will uh, comply you know, with the troublesome provision of Section 9 uh, in, in that mm -hmm. law, where it, it mentions that it should not put true that the ISPs could, could monitor any content being uh, 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 used by the, the users. At the same time, it provides a filter. So, so of late, uh, the discussions now, uh, at least uh, in last week's TWG, is that there has been an introduction of, um, aside from the ISP, an in internet intermediary or internet content host, which actually delineates already the fine line between what an internet service provider can do and what it cannot do. So as stated by my colleagues, we, in, we only offer the pipes. We cannot see what content passes through our system. We only see data packets. And so, rightfully, uh, these uh, internet intermediaries or internet content hosts have platforms that actually host social media content, which makes them more probably rightful in terms of being able to monitor what content is being posted on their platform. So, uh, again, no, uh, we support this, um, this, this hearing. We support the amendments. And uh, maybe... Uh, it would be high time really to now to go into the nitty-gritty of being able to uh, amend no? rightfully and to be able to make uh, the, the internet a safer place for everybody, especially for our children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also, uh, Mr. Ibai. Yes. Um, would any of our other private sector resource persons also like to make an input at this point? Um, we also have with us today TikTok, Grab, uh, and Ancas, among some others, perhaps. And Gcash, of course, and Gcash. Would any of you, uh, colleagues, uh, like, to, like to address any of the issues um, that we've been discussing today? If not, or if... Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I see Mr. Rada from TikTok. Yes, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for inviting us uh, to this uh, hearing. And I think just to echo what has been shared by a lot of the industry uh, partners, um, TikTok definitely takes uh, online safety uh, as a top priority for us. 
Uh, we are aware that uh, there are a lot of perpetrators online and as a platform, TikTok uh, is proactively uh, working. I, I think it was um, my friend Ariel from Global mentioned that this is really a multi-sectoral problem and we recognize this and we're working with the private sector, with NGOs and with the government to ensure that as a platform, we are ensuring uh, mechanisms so that perpetrators will not be uh, on the TikTok uh, social media social media application. We are aware that a lot of Filipinos now are being drawn to the platform because of the fun and uh, creative ways by which uh, a lot of people can express themselves. But we are also aware that there is also a, a concomitant uh, threat that it may, mm -hmm. may also be used for nefarious purposes. So we are very actively working with the committee in the technical working group in both houses of Congress to ensure that the laws are properly attuned uh, to the times and we make sure that the internet is a safe place for all of our fellow Filipinos. Uh, maraming salamat, uh, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat din po, uh, Ginoong Rada. I also mentioned that uh, GCash is with us today. I have a question here from one of our um, participants. If I may ask, related to Globe kasi GCash, GCash is being used for transactions for cyber sex and phishing and all other crimes. Is it possible to use this as an avenue, to use GCash as an avenue to identify perpetrators since there is a verification process. Uh, would you like to address that, uh, Attorney Tubayan, before I go to Pay Maya? Uh, attorney, naka mute kayo. We can't hear you. Uh, here now, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, loud and clear. Yes. We have with us also uh, the local council of GCAS, but yes, because of the KYC procedures of for GCAS, I think it is easy to trace uh, the persons who transact outside materials through GCAS. But uh, as uh, presented, I think, at the last hearing, most of the transactions are through uh, informal um uh, channels, I think, or the money remittance centers where there's less stringent uh, uh, ver verification and uh, only a small portion of, uh, of transactions are done through uh, PayMaya or GCAS, Madam Chair. Thank you, Attorney Tobayan. Nonetheless, uh, it was brought up by one of our participants in the hearing, so it must account for some uh, if not major, um, significant or noticeable share. So the committee welcomes the openness since you know your customer, since there is a verification process that perhaps you know, in, uh, in the, if in the wisdom of the committee with all these rich inputs from all of you resource persons, na possible maging paraan din ito to trace uh, perpetrators. Uh, so uh, thank you for at least that possibility. Could I call... Uh, I'm, Okay. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, is uh, are, are you the one from Paymaya? Yes, I am this the one. Uh, this is Attorney Basil Visaya from Paymaya. Attorney Madam Visaya. Chair. And then, yes, and then I may call Ms. Sef. Uh, yes, Mr. Visaya, please uh, please proceed. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Paymaya Philippines uh, fully supports the efforts of the government through le legislation and law enforcement in helping prevent and prosecute cases of online sexual abuse and exploitation of, and human trafficking. Currently, uh, we work closely with other financial services institutions and government regulators in responding to reports of online sexual abuse and exploitation in human trafficking. And part of our uh, process, Madam Chair, is to temporarily suspend uh, at the onset and investigate any account reported to us or found through our uh, in-house monitoring systems and investigate uh, these accounts. And when we found out that these accounts are involved in, in trafficking, then we will uh, immediately file a suspicious transaction report to our regulator, which is the BSP. And after that, we will block the account and terminate the account. So, Madam Chair, uh, as a non-bank financial institution supervised by the BSP, we are fully committed to cooperate 
with the authorities in cases where criminal activities are involved, where our platforms and systems are being used for malicious purposes, including those of online sexual abuse and exploitation of uh, uh, children and women as well. As the internet and digital platforms evolve, uh, Madam Chair, and access to the internet technologies become more widespread, we understand the need for a more proactive and expeditious uh, response from all sectors of society, from the government to law enforcement agencies, including us, definitely, as part of the private sector, a crucial in preventing, detecting, and prosecuting perpetrators of OSAIC and human trafficking. So a review, uh, Madam Chair, uh, of the bills presented show that the responsibility of electronic money issuers like us is threefold. One is to report uh, suspicious transactions uh, which may be related to OSAIC and human trafficking and to block the account involved and then to preserve the data. While we have already been uh, doing this duties, uh, Madam Chair, um, having a law that directs us to comply with these obligations as well as specific rules and regulations that would guide us in determining OSAIC suspicious activities would certainly help us in uh, enhancing our capabilities towards protecting children from online uh, predators. So uh, just uh, one last conclusion, Madam Chair, Paimaya expresses our full support and cooperation regarding measures currently pending in Congress to update pertinent laws uh, on violence against women and children and trafficking in person so that they are updated with the latest models of committing such crimes to help prevent even more cases from happening in the future. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to Attorney Visaya and to Paymaya. Uh, just before I call on Ms. Seth, uh, for uh, GCash, it's good to have you here also, uh, ma'am, in addition to GLOBE. Gusto ko lang balikan sandali yung Red Room because I do agree with uh, Ms. Beth of DSWP that this is OSAIC material and deserves immediate takedown. And just to show the, well, the incongruity of standards, uh, I'll flash you an account here immediately suspended for making a joke about shrooms and posting a photo of mushrooms. So mas malala pala ito with no minors involved. Our advocates therefore say that Facebook is the social media of choice because it is familiar to them. And I hope, as I've been hearing from Ms. Amber and your colleagues, I hope that I have uh, faced FB's commitment to, to step up no, in this very uh, troubling um, scene. So now, may I call uh, Ms. Seth uh, for, to speak for GCash? Hi, good Ms. afternoon. Seth? Yes, good afternoon. Madam Chair, this is Attorney Season from... Attorney um, Season, yes, please. Correct, from GCash. So, um, yes, uh, also, uh, just to support uh, and, um, and, and, and only agree no, with what uh, the other players are doing, like Bay Maya and Globe, of course, um, uh, we strongly abhor at uh, GCash the use of our platform in this malicious and uh, criminal um, um, transactions. And uh, in fact, um, we proactively uh, detect any activity um, that is um, related or um, analogous to um, prostitution or child pornography, and um, if we, uh, we 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 have established our own um, methods and uh, um, ways of um, doing this internally, um, so that we will be able to um, do something about it even before um, any complaint. Uh, comes our way. Um, I think similar to what our, our colleague from Primaya has uh, mentioned, um, we have uh, detection units um, for uh, uh, suspect, suspected transactions on uh, pornography and prostitution. 
um, these are via customer service where our customers would probably report or escalate such cases. We have also our eight, um, anti-money laundering monitoring where transactions um, which deviate from uh, protocols or hits alert levels are reviewed and reported. And we have some um, tech, uh, tech tools also where our partner vendor uh, would crawl social media sites, internet, and even uh, dark web uh, whenever Gcash is mentioned. So with, um, through these uh, three, uh, through these um, uh, methods and um, ways, um, we do uh, suspend uh, the account right away. And then um, if uh, we uh, uh, in, in co if we comply with the other requirements of law to file the necessary cases, we have established some relationship with NBI and PNP so that um, this will uh, facilitate and expedite the filing of the cases while all the um, evidence are uh, preserved and um, exist, existing. Yeah, so, and we are actually, um, uh, uh, we, we want to dedicate some time and, um, and, uh, and attention um, uh, in whatever way we can to help uh, uh, come up with the right uh, uh, legislation on these um, uh, criminal uh, activities. That's all, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Attorney Seth. Um, at this point, I would like the chair would like to acknowledge uh, Facebook for taking down the group that uh, we showed earlier. So, na take down na it's been taken down. Pero sana all, Miss Amber, Miss Claire can tell you that's a Filipino expression that we wish all that should be taken down will be taken down uh, by you and other uh, platforms. So, sana all, but. Uh, uh, good, uh, good one for doing that. The dear colleagues, the chair would like to try to end by uh, one p.m. So, as a possibly uh, last question before a brief uh, closing remark, um, I, I know that the children's rights advocates are pushing for a separate OSAIC bill, and based on these couple of hearings so far, it does appear that OSAEC should be treated as a distinct crime and not be uh, lumped together with another uh, a bill treating of another distinct crime, the anti-trafficking in persons uh, bill. Uh, may I hear the thoughts of the Child Rights Network uh, on this, please? Uh, Ms. Nanita, would you like to... Uh, speak to this question, two separate measures, or do we need to combine? Because the, the mind of the chair is leaning towards two separate measures still. Ms. Nanita, are you here? Ah, I don't see Ms. Nanita. Or anyone from the CRN, please? Uh, I see Tony Flores or any child rights advocate who's still with us. Would you like to speak to that point, please? Uh, Sir Ace, would you like to uh, take this up again? Mr. Deloy. Uh, thank you, Senator Visa. Although yes, please. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we're not members of CRM, but we're close partners. You are a child rights advocate. Uh, but, uh, yes, definitely. We also support the notion that there should be a separate OSAIC bill because as what we've discovered, and you might have uh, noted in the previous hearings also, that OSAIC in itself has several nuances. And mm -hmm. my fear or our fear also as child, uh, child rights advocates is that if we lump this together with uh, with the trafficking anti-trafficking in persons bill, we mm -hmm. might model the provisions. So having two separate bills would make it more hyper-focused. And this would also allow us to give justice to those voices that we've heard today. Thank you very much for that, um, Mr. Deloy. So just one more thing before we close, unless my colleagues have uh, any last questions. 
and uh, uh, for for especially for USEC M, I hope that uh, the DOJ can uh, continue to support this. Um, the the direction that uh, the committee seems to be taking towards two separate and not one combined measure. Uh, of course, giving uh, due consideration, weighty consideration to the proposed uh, amendments uh, coming from the Justice Department. So, uh, Sen Aimi, do you have uh, any other uh, point that you would like to raise in our hearing? No, uh, I think uh, we have a lot of uh, work to do. So uh, we need to uh, push a little bit harder so that we can finish this, if not within the month of Women's Month, at least through this year. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sen Aimi, one of our authors of the bills that we've considered these past couple of hearings but yes let's uh, let's see if we can push this at least one step further uh, before we adjourn this uh, women's month so dear friends and colleagues we've exposed very revealing things today maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat sa bawat isa sa inyo especially Ria, Anna and Keb for sharing your stories thank you so much Unspeakable crimes have been happening right under our noses. Unspeakable crimes that should finally be put to a stop now. To be honest, I don't really feel the urgency yet of all uh, our private uh, companies, uh, not yet all the social networks that we invited today, mga bata at totoong mga tao ang naapektuhan ng teknolohiya ninyo. Pinakita natin na may over 7,000 members ang isang Facebook group kung saan maraming mga kabataan ang na-exploit at naaabuso. Mga batang nagbebenta ng sexual videos in exchange for money para sa modules nila for online learning. Pero ang isang sagot kanina ay iimbestigahan namin. Pero yung mushrooms suspended agad. Yung mga bata baka kung hindi pa naghiring hindi ma-actionan. Buti na lang may isang bata na nagsumbong sa ating lahat. Ilan pa ang mga groups, mga messaging apps, Google Drives, na di natin alam na naaabuso na pala ng ating kabataan. How can you ensure that you put the interests of our people, our young people, our children, over your products? Uh, we all need to see that consistently. So please... Review your policies, review your, your community standards. In that way, let us not downplay the seriousness of the situation. I expect all of you, dear colleagues, all of us, to be more proactive in this fight. Let's end online sexual abuse and exploitation of children now. I call on all resource persons to please participate in the second and last TWG uh, next week, Monday. Again, with thanks to all of you, um, this hearing is adjourned. <clears throat> Salamat po. I, I ingat everyone, stay healthy. Salamat po. Salamat.